Okay, okay, okay. Good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Chicago Conservative. And today, we finally are doing it, guys. We have the mm -hmm. debate between politics and life and caffeine zombies, guys. Let's let's introduce ourselves. You want to go? All right, I'll go first. Hi, guys. My name is Jordan. Uh, my channel is Politics and Life. Uh, grew up as a Democrat. Uh, when Trump came in the game, I did hate him at first, but the more I actually looked into what he was saying and his policies, uh, the more I actually was intrigued and looked more into him. And the four years that he was president, there are some things that I don't agree that he did, but there are a lot of good policies that I do agree with what he did do, especially when it comes to helping this country and preventing any wars. That was probably the one thing that really won me over with him is the zero wars as president compared to, let's say, the last three presidents. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'd say that's the biggest key for me. But I don't want to go into like a five minute speech because I know we're going to be talking about specific subjects. So that's all I got to say right now. Sure. Um, I'm Danny and I, my channel's on YouTube, Caffeine Zombies. Um, I basically started my political life as I didn't care about politics because I was super poor and no one was talking about us or helping us. And then uh, I started to get more and more into it. Later on in life, I became unaffiliated and I've only ever registered as a Democrat in states that require you to register to participate in the primaries. Otherwise, I count myself as unaffiliated. Um, I don't really care where a person's coming from in terms of their politics, just as long as it's got good or decent data behind it and isn't out to do harm. Okay. All right, guys. So those are some great introductions that we got there. So we just going to get started with this debate. And by the way, guys, I am moderating this, okay? I won't <laughs> be debating, okay? I'm not in this debate today. So the first question, we're just going to kick it off with a um, with a simple topic. Uh, which comes down to the border crisis in America. So we're going to start with politics and life. How do you feel about the border crisis that's going on in America right now? Uh, I think it impacts every state. Uh, look at my state alone, especially where I'm living within a mile radius. Uh, you can't really tell if they're illegal, I would say, but there's a homeless crisis and the legal crisis, which I think is mixed in because you don't know who these people are. Uh, mm hmm and it is causing a stir in the state, not just the state, a country. You see, I hear stories also every day where there's illegals killing Americans. They're not getting charged for their crimes when it comes to even attacking cops or, let's say, taking all the resources also away from Americans. We have homeless veterans on the street, and these illegals are getting top priority. They're getting like free insurance, free EBT, free health care, free housing. They're getting prioritized over actual Americans and even veterans who have fought for our freedom. So when it comes to the border crisis, I probably take that as the number one issue in our country right now, especially when it comes to this administration. I don't really think it brings anything good to our country, like at all. I understand we have probably con or companies that have openings for jobs, but as I said, we have homeless veterans on the street. We should prioritize those people and the homeless Americans before we prioritize prioritize illegals who are breaking our federal laws coming right. across our border into our country do that's, you think all do you think all um of the illegals that come here are are have bad intentions or do you think like some are just coming with bad intentions some are just trying to get away from you know their their home country and you know the things that's going on there like war you know things like that like are you feel like do you feel like it's majority criminals do you feel like it's just majority people that's just migrating like what do you believe i would say it's half and half uh again it seems that this administration doesn't really tell us the truth in regards to much so we don't really know who is coming across but the videos and the pictures that we are seeing on these news outlets which i don't trust any big media nothing right or left i think they're all bad um but mm. you see these videos you see these pictures and it's thousands upon thousands of middle-aged men uh, a lot of them don't look like they have children or as it's being exposed uh, i've seen a couple videos laura loomer who i know some might disagree with but she's literally gone down to the border and in some videos exposed that a lot of these people will just use kids as a like a what's the term i'm thinking of uh like a distraction almost to get across looking like they're trying to just come across to their family, like because they're in a dire situation when really they're just using them to traffic them 
and uh -huh. to come across the border with bad intentions. And as I said, it's not everyone. I would say it's about 50%. I wouldn't know, so I don't want to assume on that. But I would say mm -hmm. from what I see, the stories I see every day, they're not all good. And uh, we should know that. That should just be common knowledge. But that's just okay. my opinion. So. All right. Caffeine Zombies, man. What do you think about the border crisis that's going on in America? So I think there's a real border crisis, and then I think there's a manufactured border crisis. So there's definitely a border crisis, which is to say that we have tons of people coming over uh, the border. Probably the most dis the, the most scary thing is what was released by the House Committee about uh, fentanyl precursors getting shipped into our country uh, through various means, not just necessarily the southern border. Uh, that's a big problem, right? Because that actually kills Americans immediately. I think why I would say that there is also a manufactured border crisis is because we're using incorrect numbers. So a lot of times we're inflating the numbers or we're taking migrants, uh, we're taking, uh, so like people who are coming here legitimately, we're taking asylum seekers who are legally here. Uh, that's what an asylum seeker is. It's legally able to be here. Um, right. And then we're also taking illegal folks and we're combining them all together. Uh, a couple of like misnomers, for instance, like I hear uh, Charlie Kirk talk about this uh, uh, often, I guess, quote unquote, it's just the same video and repeat where he'll do things like, uh, oh, how many, you know, uh, green cards do you think were issued? Oh, three million. Well, he doesn't account for like renewals. He doesn't account for people applying and not like getting them. He doesn't account for uh, quite a few other pieces of data that would lower that number in terms of the raw number of people. And everybody who's talking about the crisis as a bad thing and it's 100% bad, uh, always side on that kind of inflated number versus uh, going and saying, okay, well, under Trump, there was a bunch of illegals here, still over 10 million, and then now it's roughly about 11 million. Okay, what's that real number? Okay, we also have people coming here and getting services, uh, to Jordan's point, right? Um, but those people aren't getting services in uh, lieu of veterans getting services. I really wish we would actually give veterans more services and Americans more services. I agree. Yeah. I'm I a agree. liberal. I, I believe in things like single care, single care health care. Uh, so I wish those things were available for our folks more often and more um, and larger but, amounts. But right? see, like that, a, that, that, a that, I agree. But, I but, agree. That's the, but that's the question that everybody wants to know, though. Like, why mm -hmm. wouldn't an average veteran or an average person that fought for this country, why aren't they getting you know, if not, you know, any benefits as much as the illegal immigrants that's coming here. Yeah. So I think that's a good question for um, at least recently the Republican Party, not the Democrat. Uh, people like Bernie Sanders were folks who led trying to get more services to vets. And it was pushed back against, not just by Republicans, but by a large portion of Republicans. They're more than happy to support. And this is talking about the politicians, not necessarily individuals, right? Right. Um, they were yeah. more happy to support going to war, paying people like Lauren yeah. collecting tons of money, paying people like Halle Burton tons of money without giving us armor or good quality uh, vehicles, right, to go to mm -hmm. war. But then when the people come back, they're not as willing to provide for them. Yep. Yes, right. Um, okay. And it's the progressive side of a lot of the liberal folks who are actually trying to get those services, not just to vets, but to a lot of people, and it would include vets. Like one of the number one groups of people who use SNAP, veterans. They shouldn't have to, right? We should all agree that they shouldn't yeah, have to use definitely. food stamp, right? Which was the old term, now it's SNAP, right? Um, mm -hmm. But they're one of the largest chunks of people on it, along with senior citizens, along with people who have college degrees and families who are working oftentimes multiple jobs. They all qualify a lot of times for SNAP. They're the largest groups of people. Who's the side trying to reduce that amount of money because of a small fraction of either fraudulent people or individual single people? It's not Democrats and not liberals. So I hold on. Let me so so let me just uh okay. Do you have something you want to say, Jordan? Before uh, I was I was just gonna say I did agree with a lot of what he said. Uh, there's a few parts I wouldn't. I would blame the Uniparty. Party. I think both sides suck. Uh, I'm not saying all of them on the conservative side, but there are a lot of conservatives that suck they're not real mm -hmm. conservatives in my opinion and mm -hmm. both sides sell out for in my opinion money because a lot of these spending package bills oh we did that i don't know if that really see i should have dug into this more when it came to the border i don't know maybe you guys can answer this that some of these bills that they're spending does it go towards the legals as well like any of the bills that yeah, a, a lot of uh, you, are you are you referring to the border bill 
Yeah, the fake border bill that really yeah, lets 5,000 people a day. Is it 5,000 people a day in, right, that they call it a border so bill? It's, it's actually a line. So what happens is that 5,000 apprehension, right, which can be less than 5,000 people because some people go out and come back in. So at 5,000 in a month, they turn off the it's ability – uh, per right. month. But you do uh, know, but you do they know turn off that... the ability to let people like they, they actually turn up the kind of response to get people back, um, which isn't very far from what we're doing today. I think it's like 7,500 or something like that. Um, I don't know that exact number, but the border bill was 5,000, which resulted in something like 478,000 people being sent back in December of last year, 2023. That's under the Biden's administration. Right. So okay, it's not so... like it's just an open border. So, so let me just ask you this. Um, if this was a border, I, I just like to call it quote unquote border bill because it, it honestly has nothing to do with the border. But sure. if this is if this bill is supposed to be about the border, why mm -hmm. is money going to Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, yeah. Red Sea conflicts and, you know, like places that really has nothing to do with the actual border itself? You feel what I'm saying? Like now I, I get it. Now, look, there has been undisputed like facts and i have evidence to back this up that joe biden has been doing business with ukraine for the longest yep. you know what i'm saying so do you joe think biden hasn't this been is... doing business with ukraine i'm sorry joe biden hasn't been doing business with the ukraine at least there's no evidence that joe biden's been 10 percent for the big guy so that's you, not whoa, 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 hold there's up. There's checks, there's audio. There's the checks are actually isn't, about payments. There isn't so, evidence that Joe Biden has been doing There isn't Ukraine? direct evidence. So we have to talk a little bit about direct evidence versus indirect evidence, okay? So there's not direct evidence that Joe Biden ever took a single penny from the we'll, Ukraine Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. Go ahead. Right? But there is, for instance, like direct evidence that Donald Trump took money from China and Russia. He personally mm. had interests in China and Russia and didn't give them up. Like that's a well- I mean, but those were business dealings though. Correct, Other, but it's illegal but, but that, for the okay, president. I mean, I can make that same case. But the difference is Biden does, didn't have any actual but, businesses though. He didn't really so, so sell that, any services. You. Again, that doesn't that's matter the because the reason why this is a problem but isn't they because you have a what? business or not. The but then why did they- it's a problem is because a politician, a president shouldn't be trying to enrich themselves with deals with particular countries, because that would cause a problem. But so the thing I used to be is, before Trump, that's what Biden the did. The thing is, before the but the, the thing, but he didn't. The Biden you have to understand. Yeah, exactly. The thing you have to understand, though, is before Trump was even president, he had he had businesses literally everywhere, yes. man. Just and because they're supposed he's president to divest. doesn't. I'm sorry. Every president in the past. Has divested. I can't say every president because I don't know before like the 1900s. I actually but... would disagree. Uh, Bill Clinton. I wouldn't. Past, I wouldn't know I would, about I would, that. I would actually I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> I the actually would disagree. The past every president from that I know, interest. every president that I know that's a Democrat mm -hmm. actually became more richer after Obama they did. After sure. their four, it's not that they became their, richer or poor. It's that they divest from foreign investments. They can still become rich from local investments from the United States. If anything, that's a feedback loop in order to make them more inclined to make the United States successful. But when you have somebody like Joe Biden and the Bidens mm -hmm. that literally have no history of business like at all compared to Donald sure. Trump, who literally have businesses all over the country. What do you mm -hmm. like? You got to help me explain this because, you, yeah. OK, like what is the Biden's brand exactly like? Because can I say something my real knowledge, quick? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say. But when it comes to Trump's businesses, they will call him corrupt. They will sell, say he's he's Putin's puppet. He sold foreign influence. And then when there's actual text, because I've seen text messages, I've seen audio, I've seen Joe Biden on video talking about how he withhold money from the prosecutor unless they fired him in Ukraine. I the just when there's so many right? when there's so many different things that are pretty much showing the corruption, eventually. It quacks like a bird. If it sounds like a bird, it's a bird. That's just how I think of it, at least. When there's mm -hmm. checks, there's audio, there's just everything. When it, on contraire, when it's Trump, there's usually not really evidence. It's just hearsay. And then the Dems are usually all over it. Like, oh, we got to get him 90, 100 years in prison, 90 felonies. When I, I mean, I would give him, him, I would give him, I would give him the, the documents that Trump had when it came to, you know, military documents. Yes, Trump did have that. But 
you got to be, we got to be honest here, bro. Who hasn't done that? Joe Biden has had documents like that in his garage. Remember, and he wasn't even president yet. For a $5 million book There's deal, too. Differences so I'm not saying Trump, two. I'm not saying Trump is innocent and everything like that. God means no. But you, you have to understand there's just a form you like there has to be a like everybody has to be held accountable the same. You feel what I'm saying? Sure. So if I'm if I'm the police and I come over to your house and I say, hey, look, we've heard a disturbance in your house. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I, we, we need to investigate uh, because we've had reports of disturbances within your house. Right. And you go, no. Right. And they're like, OK, well, I can understand you don't want to help and we don't hear anything else. So we're not going to come in. Then they come back with a warrant because there's more complaints and they say, hey, uh, we need to get into your house. And you're actually like, no, I'm actually going to hide all of the like, you know, stuff or I'm doing stuff in the background where I'm like shuffling things around or or trying to do something that's in, that's conspicuous. Right. And then they move in because you refused them twice. They've gone through all of the processes to go in. That's a different story. Right. Then if the first time they come over and said, hey, there was a disturbance and you're like, yeah, you can check it out. There's no disturbance. But is You'd there agree any, that those are two different circumstances, right? But is there any proof that he did not work with these people? Because yes. they've lied about him for years now at this point. So it's just kind of hard to believe anything that comes out of media's there's, mouth. There's documentation. I mean, if you're willing to accept Victor, Victor Shokin's word on something, even though all of the I don't know. I don't know him. I, I just heard what Biden said. And that yeah, just so, seems so the general guilty right there. Really quickly on Ukraine, because I did a whole video on this and you can actually look at it. Victor Shokin um, lied about him say, about saying that nobody in the EU was uh, ever investigating him or against him. So Victor Shokin gets his job because the prior do, do you know why Putin is do, do you know why Putin is invading Ukraine? If I may ask, I just oh, want I to can answer that. Ukraine I can answer that because he actually wants agricultural uh, land, almost certainly. That's, uh, that's actually why. because Ukraine actually produces true, a ton okay. of food. That is not. But true, let, let, let's be very clear. There was a peace deal on the table until Biden sent Boris Johnson down there to break that peace deal up. And that is what started it. Yeah. And, and, and we got to understand Trump was actually cleaning up Obama's mess because you do know that that war I mean. between Ukraine and, and Russia that actually started under the Obama administration. It, so well, you got to think did. about it. You and everybody let that. him take Crimea, just like uh, they let Hitler take the Rhineland in World War II. Okay, that doesn't yeah, mean that I, like I people that. don't recognize I, I mistakes okay. and then stop it, right? I'll give you that. Okay, I just want I just wanted to see if you knew why you know Russia was doing what they were doing. I mean, yeah, but Russia I, almost that's certainly. That's debatable. What you said, but yeah, I mean, Vladimir we'll Putin come back has to that. No, Vladimir Putin has no interest in. Uh, rebuilding the USSR, for instance. He wants to make Russia bigger. That's what he wants to do. So do you, um, sorry, I was just going to ask, do you think, because uh, do you think that he's going to try to keep on expanding and keep on, uh, let's say, invading more land if the deal, if the war just stops? Do you think he's going to continue trying to invade other places? Like I've heard a lot of big media say. So Russia, right, under Vladimir Putin, right, has been an expansionist country because like 95% of their money, their country's money comes from energy exports, which is very, very dangerous, right? Because as soon as energy is not needed, especially oil and gas, um, it hurts their economy dramatically, which is what we which is what we saw when Crimea was being taken over, right? Uh, Vladimir Putin basically said, we're going to turn off the gas to Europe. You're not going to have any oil or gas coming to your country because they were their main uh, importer. And what happened was Europe tried to to say, hey, this is a bluff, and went against him, stood up against him, and he was like, nope, turn off. And they had to then bow down to this idea. So we, as their allies, also basically were like, eh, okay, it's just Crimea, right? Um, and it was kind of this repeat of almost World War II, a dictator invading another place uh, for historically inaccurate reasons in order to take it back. Then what does he do? He bides some time, he builds up some networks, then he doesn't even care that he gets kicked out of essentially all of the like international organizations for inhumane actions within his own country, by the way, killing competitors, uh, throwing people in jail forever, and then goes, okay, we're going to invade the rest of Ukraine. And then I mean, he lies I, about it for months yeah. and months and months and months, hiding his soldiers in indescri you know, non-Russian uh, uh, descri uh, described uniforms. Mm -hmm. And he continues to do it until people basically say, no, we're going to push back. 
because he's essentially a bully. What would he do after that, after he takes over Ukraine? Like, he doesn't care about the energy infrastructure in Ukraine. That's clear, because he's bombing the hell out of it. He's destroying it as much as he possibly can. He's been doing that since the beginning, attacking power plants and all sorts of do things. Do you think... Um, go ahead. <laughs> what are we going to say, bro? Or Ashton? Uh, I think he froze. Oh. Oh. Your Can service might be... Oh, there, oh, there we go. you go. There right. you are. What are you saying? You, you got, froze. You <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. Repeat that. I'm sorry. Oh, um. So basically, did I, freeze I think or yes. Did somebody else freeze. You froze. You, you froze. froze. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I was saying. Do you think the um? Okay. Do you think Ukraine is a capitalist or a communist country? So I don't think that there's Last any question. true capitalist or communist countries in the world today. Uh, we're all too big to be one system. You just have to look at the United States. We're probably one of the more capitalist societies. And what a, we're very so wait, successful China capitalist isn't communist? Societies. China is not 100% communist. They've got some socialism in there. Are They've got China capitalism in there. Is China People don't get paid part? the same, uh, which is a, a you know, a mark of socialism or extreme socialism anyways. And people don't uh, get all of their food distributed by the government, which would Good be more of a mark of communism. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, in socialist countries. People on, get, wait, have a, wait. usually a range of pay. So like um, it was either Switzerland or I think it's Switzerland where like the president uh, basically made about $10,000 equivalent more than like the singer who was super popular there who made like the same amount as the person who was running. Okay, but house. we got to we got to we got to take into consideration, though, we got to take into consideration, though, who worked harder, who had more experience. Who work more hours? No, no. All, you know all I'm arguing, I agree with you. I actually you like can't. capitalist systems. Um, so I like uh, the United States being capitalistic. I think a well-regulated mm. capitalism is a good method forward for economy. But I also think that we need social um, uh, programs in order to help everyone do better productivity. Uh, it, like all you have to do is look at schools, right? If you look right. at elementary schools, People, kids who aren't eating breakfast and aren't eating lunch perform incredibly poorly on tests at school, learning uh, information, right? But you start feeding them and they start to do way better. If people are too poor to afford food mm -hmm. and we want to be the most productive society out there, we either have to fix the systems that are allowing them to be poor or we need to provide them food. Those are the answers to being the most productive, useful, forward-moving capitalism. But then at a certain point, we stop doing that, right? At a certain income level, because we go, okay, cool. You can sort of take care of yourself at this point in time. You can participate in the system yourself. And now it's like 100% capitalist or it's, or it's a well-regulated for safety reasons capitalist society. I'm okay with that. That's kind of mm -hmm. how we operate now. We just have that line really far too low. Yeah. Right? Um, okay. Yeah, that's okay by that me. Well. I can agree with that. But like, and so when you look at other countries, oh. all of them are similar. They all have pieces, right, uh, that are intermixed. Uh, and we're neither mm -hmm. a democracy, nor a republic, nor a tyranny, nor a dictatorship, or any of those kinds of things. But we have some elements of all of those, right? Like the military needs to run more dictatorially than it needs to run democratically. You don't vote to determine whether or not yes. you go to the other country. I right? agree, you agree with the that. the order and you go. Mm -hmm. um, so like there are pieces of all kinds of different kinds of government that we need to piece together. Socialism works best for the people on the bottom of the economy scale because it gives you a network. If, for instance, you didn't have to work two jobs uh, because the government was actually going, look, you're doing enough work. It's just that you're not getting paid mm -hmm. well enough. And they were to support that, then that would be amazing, right? Um, but if someone's really wealthy, they're already doing well. We don't need to do that for them. Okay. You know what I think I, I wanna, fixes I, all I, of I, this? I, yeah, you know I, what I think fixes all this? Stop allowing illegals in so we can start pushing the resources towards American and Americans who are struggling with finances, for example, can't provide food for their own kids. We should start putting bills out that right. are just straight for American single spending bills that will help these people in specific situations where they may not be able to afford rent or they have to work two jobs or they may not begin by or they're about to lose their home with their kids in it because the government is so focused on all these overseas wars instead of at home. And mm -hmm. I would 100 percent be in agreement with that if I thought that when we took the money away from, say, 
getting people away from a war-torn country, uh, which is some of the illegals coming over, right? Uh, that that money would actually be used to help Americans. But the fact of the matter is, the history of our country sort of indicates that, yeah, we'll take the money from there, but then we'll just enrich the big war companies or we'll just yeah. enrich the corporations. <laughs> We're not going to enrich the American people. Okay. Um, I know that's far field from the question about border <laughs> crisis. But again, no I would be like, if someone positioned a bill and they're I like, hey, look, I want a border bill where there's zero. We have to have zero people uh, coming across the border. And I don't care what the reason is, right? There's zero people. But what we're going to do is for every dollar we spend doing that, we're going to make sure that a person who's, you know, a family that's making under, you know, $100,000 a year, a family, right? Because $100,000 is not very much in this country anymore for a right. whole family um, or individuals at a certain mm-hmm. amount. We're going to give them like a negative income bracket where if they don't make enough money, we're going to pay them up to the, the $100,000 mark. We're going to pay them up to the $60,000 mark. Whatever we decide is that line. We're going to take that money and we're going to match it. I'd be like, cool, let's do that. But the problem is we can't. Uh, I even say both sides. We can't even uh, trust our government. So I feel like they're going to try to pull some BS and end up spending that money on something else, even though it's voted on helping the people. So I think we can trust our government mm-hmm. somewhat. We've been a right, relatively yeah, successful country, right? Oh. Um, okay. I didn't okay, hear guys, Last, oh, last remarks and we're going to move on to the next topic, okay? No, no, I was saying I think la- we, last I'm remarks, okay with moving on. on. I've talked a lot. Topic. So go ahead. <laughs> Okay, man. The, so the next topic we're going to talk about is the LGBT community, man. So how do you guys feel about the LGBT community when it comes to, um, you know, trans being allowed and women's restrooms, um, you know, and basically men can be women nowadays. There are more than two genders and stuff like that. So uh, we're actually going to start with uh, caffeine zombies first because we started with um, we started with politics and life last time. So what do you think about um, this movement here? Do you think this is good for America? Do you think it's bad for America? Do you think this is like, a form of, you know, people being delusional? Do you think it's just a way of comforting people? Like, what are your thoughts? So, I, and I, you broke up a little bit there, but I think I got what you were asking. I think the answer to that question is it's a little bit of everything. It really depends on what category we're talking about. So uh, the LGBT community, um, especially in particular trans rights, because I think that's more the kind of conservative piece where they have a problem and less these days about lesbians and, and gay men. Um, so uh, in this world, right, we have a kind of three different categories. We have a, how it impacts social environments, how it impacts Uh, legal environments, which would be things like bathrooms and such, and also sports, right? Those are kind of rules oriented. And then how it impacts science. Okay. Okay. We're we're just going to stick. We're just going to stick with the, we're just going to stick with the basic question. Is it good for America? Yes or no? So I think that it's necessary for America because in America right now, uh, we don't understand the history of the divide between gender and sex. that has been around for thousands of years. And that's, this is bringing a lot of that to the forefront. Plus, I'm a big personal freedoms person. So personal freedom to me is kind of on the top. Um, Now, I do agree that that also includes like safety. Safety is another step uh, in that direction. We have to consider safety when we're considering personal freedoms. But I always side on personal freedoms over uh, national security, for instance. Um, But when it comes to bathrooms, I think there's a, just a different answer. You, you can just make bathrooms that are safe. If, if the concern is that bathrooms are unsafe, uh, the best bathrooms for children and the best bathrooms for women are individual bathrooms that more one or two people can be in so you could have a family. And the person can actually walk into the bathroom with their child, regardless of what gender they are, regardless of what g- gender their child is. Um, that's the safest thing for children. And it helps to be safe for women and it helps the, that it's safe for trans. We can actually answer all three safety concerns in one answer. Okay. And what answer would that be? Uh, individualized bathrooms. And we incentivize it. We don't bathrooms. require so would that, it. <laughs> so would that just solve, would that solve like all the problems for like the, for, for the community? 
as I far think as so. you know, I think as being... long as people can be safe in the bathroom, they don't care. So, what, on the so door. wait, because so, so let me ask you this: <laughs> because there have been cases like this to where Planet Fitness, been, yeah, there have been many cases to where because you know there aren't cameras in bathrooms, right? You know that's illegal. Of course. Okay, so I, we're just on the same page with that. Okay, so you do realize there are cases where like girls and they claim that they, you know they're a woman and they this has happened in high schools, this has happened in gyms, this actually happened mm -hmm. in homeless shows as well. So I mean let's just keep it a stack. We know no, men no. like actual I'm sorry, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we, we know some men are gonna just. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say your signal is a little staticky, but it's better now. Continue. Okay, okay, good, good. But we know we know men are gonna take advantage of this. The ones that are just you know cuckoo for cocoa puffs. So my thing is, the men who are who adopt these children, because you do know like it's legal for two you know, men or two women to adopt kids. And then, you know, there have been cases where those two individuals harass and harm that child. So how would that... Do you think the that problem? there's zero cases of men and women couples uh, getting a child and not harming them? I mean, it's... I mean, I'm not saying there are, but gener generally speaking, if, you know, you got... If you got an LGBT couple and if you got a normal couple, who's more likely to, you know, harm the kid, you know? Sure. And I, I would probably not as, argue not as far as like the, the, not as far as like physically, but like, you know, I don't really want to like sexually, emotionally, whatever. But, you know, harm, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sure. OK. Yeah. No, I, I don't. First, I don't think there's a lot of numbers on this, but there's some good telling data which is to say that children who are raised in a family with two parents, which it doesn't matter what the parents' gender are, that's actually what the studies show, as long as they're raised with two parents versus one parent, there's an advantage there. There's a, a huge advantage. It's actually the one, like the one thing, the statistic, that helps to identify like the most likely result of what that kid's going to turn out to be, whether it's a criminal, whether it's well-educated, whether it's a lot of time, you know, mentally healthy, all those sorts of things. The biggest predictor is family <laughs> and having two parents. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so that would seem to indicate that if there was a huge divide between like the injury that a gay couple could commit versus a uh, straight couple, that that wouldn't be the case. We'd be saying a, a but in that statement. We'd say, oh, no, no, no. Two parents, except when those two parents are women, two women or two men. Plus safe places. Things what do you think is more safer? Safe. Let me just oh, ask you this last I, yeah. question. And Jordan, we're going to get sure. to you. And then we're going to get to your thoughts, Jordan. Mm -hmm. What do you think is best for the child? Uh, a child that has parents with the same genitalia or a child with a mom and a dad? I don't think the child matters. As, I don't think the child cares as long as they're loved, cared for, and given chances to develop. So it doesn't matter if a child has a mom and a dad. Mm. There's not even statistics that show that children raised in uh, gay couples are no more likely to be gay themselves than uh, couples raised. That's in the actually family. not. That's actually not true because I haven't look, seen any of these studies. The I wouldn't know. If you look at the there statistics, are statistics that someone might represent find themselves. That, let, let's uh -huh. let's take two women for example, right? Yeah. If you look at the statistic, you would actually find that um, most like most gay couples, preferably women, are more violent than, you know, than heterosexual couples. But you're saying that two two women are more mm -hmm. violent to their child than and to each heterosexual other. couples, and 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 elderly people. So that's actually three. There are more harm. There are more harmful to children, women, and people. It's, it's, it's going to uh, tell you 70. Uh, you're freezing again. You are. Chicago conservative, you there? There you are. Yes, sir. Oh. Can y'all see me? 
Yeah, now I can. Oh, man. It sucks today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so, uh, so Jordan, what do you feel mm -hmm. about the uh, LGBT community? Do you think this is good for America? I say absolutely not. Uh, well, it kind of just starts, like, with the BLM. It always starts with, like, acceptance or uh, the, the, the trans movement or the Palestine mo movement. They all kind of seem to happen the same way with acceptance, and then they eventually mm -hmm. push their limits. They push them as far as they can. For example, uh, I've seen stories or even videos where Matt Walsh has put out what they're like giving puberty blockers to kids. They're they're pretty much prioritizing yeah. so this that, What is movement. the woman documentary? I've seen it. Yes. Uh, yeah, me too. And uh, they're prioritizing these movements over actual studies, history, science, uh, what we should be teaching kids. And when it comes to bathrooms, uh, I think that they should make their own bathroom because why should actual woman with her child have to not go into the woman's bathroom to make this person feel accepted? Why should we prioritize mm -hmm. these people who don't even have, it seems to me, any respect for women? Uh, let them get the bathroom over actual woman with the kid it's almost like we're replacing woman for example sports you see these sports you see these trans athletes i almost see a, a story every day where you see like a person getting hurt there was one a uh, couple weeks ago volleyball this woman or th this trans person spiked it over and like broke this woman's nose or there was this fight two oh weeks gosh. ago this woman got this woman transformed into a man she went to the ring with this uh man boxer knocked out in 20 seconds this kind of stuff is happening on a daily basis, it seems, and we should take it very serious. I don't think that we should be mixing it at all. I, that doesn't mean I don't think you shouldn't be trans. Be who you want. Just don't push it on the kids. Don't push your ideologies on kids when it comes to any movement, any movement. The BLM, as I said, the Palestine. I just hate when people force their beliefs on other people. We're all entitled right. to believe what we want. But when it comes to the bathroom situation, I have a big problem with that because Women are coming out saying they don't feel comfortable. There's women coming out in sports saying they don't feel comfortable. And instead of taking the woman's side, they're banning these women. Like, they're literally, yeah, in my eyes, replacing up. women. And as I said, be who you want. I have nothing against the trans movement. Just only when they involve kids and when they go into secret spaces that you're supposed to feel comfortable in. For example, the bathroom. Mm. Can I ask some follow-up questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. For it. Yeah. So one of the questions I would have would be uh, in that same ideology, right? Uh, do you hold that you shouldn't raise your kids under any kind of religion? So I'm not a re really religious person. I do believe in God. I don't think that you should push even religious beliefs on people. I am a free thinker. Believe what you want. On kids. Believe on in who kids. you want. I don't have kids, so I couldn't say that, but I sure. would I raise mean, them probably were, if, in a Christian yeah. household. I, I do believe in God, so I probably would. I wouldn't force them on them, but I wouldn't. I would probably uh, preach it, though. I would say, hey. Sure. So you'd talk about it as an option. Yes, but I wouldn't force it. That's the difference. I sure. feel like would this bring is being to forced. Well, I don't even go to church. So see, uh, the thing is, I see, I see, I see where the, I see where you're talking. Uh oh. <laughs> Breaking out, man. <laughs> just froze. Chicago conservative, where are you at? <laughs> Yeah, can y'all hear me? Oh, there. Yes, now we can. Okay, okay, okay. I think what politics was trying to explain, uh, caffeine is that, that. I mean, yes, you can put religion in that same category, but we have to understand that religion isn't being forced on everybody nowadays. See, this LGBT stuff is actually being forced upon kids, and like it's being put in every single show. It's being put in every single sports event. You know what I'm saying? You got Pride Month. You got all of these. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, can I speak on day. something real quick? I just want to say go something. Ahead, just because go ahead. You, you just said something that made something pop in my head. So some of these Pride events uh, are just, in my opinion, disgusting. Uh, as I said, be who you want to be. When, but when there's kids, toddlers, kids of all ages to the sides, waving the flags around, and there's dudes just in underwear, literally walking up to these people, shaking their dick in your face. Sorry for my language. Uh, right. I just find it's very inappropriate. Sure. So, so is that your on, decision so... to make or is it their parents' decision to make? It is their it That's is their the parents, parents, but is I it would voluntary disagree. or is the Pride Month is the Pride Parade being required for you to show up? 
It's not being required, but it's being pushed by our government. So I'll give you an example here. So, but they don't and, have and to just, show up, though, is what Caffeine Zombies is saying, right? right? Yeah, they don't have to show right. up. And and we're a country that allows for free speech, which includes free expression, right? We're all in agreement. Okay, so Caffeine Zombies. A, uh, Can you imagine if Trump okay, supporters I'm, did that, though? Trump, Trump supporters do show up regularly to places. Oh, I'm talking about, like, like pride events, let's say. Why would it push? It could. Mm, I don't people, know people, so, look, look, so people who um, even are like modern day Nazis, which I'm not equivalent <laughs> the MAGA people or the uh, gay folks as part of Nazis. Okay, just to be clear, mm -hmm. but even Nazis can go and have a uh, can have a parade. They can walk down your streets. They can uh, express themselves however they want to, as long as they're not committing violence and as long as they're getting basically they're telling the city that they're going to be doing this. I disagree okay, with that. So wait, wait. Or, I mean, me, you may disagree with it, but that's what right. the freedom of speech allows. Let me ask know, Caffeine we... Zombies. Let me ask Caffeine Zombies because I think he already know where I'm going with this one. Sure. So you like to bring up religion, right? Now you know I like to bring up skin color. So sure. let's let's use that analogy again, right? Let's say Jordan. Let's say it's October 31st, and let's say. Mm -hmm. Jordan wants to be Wesley Snipes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he wants to be he wants to go as Wesley this Snipes. Uh -oh. so hold on, hold on. Hold up. Let's say Jordan paints his face black, right? Because you have to be black mm -hmm. to be blade, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or yeah. so yeah, I mean if you're representing the blade in the comics right. and the blade in the Yeah, the blade in the, the comics. Sure. Right, sure. right, right, yeah. right. So you will have yeah. to basically do blackface. So what sure. do you think that's offensive if, if somebody do, does blackface so i think free speech protects you regardless of whether or not what you were doing is offensive that's actually the line right because free speech is easy yeah, I believe when you in the agree first with what the person is saying free speech only I matters that, but i'm, you I'm asking with would what you, the person is doing would you put blackface and i call it woman face but i'm just going to call it a man just dressing as a woman would you put those two in the same category, yes or no? So I put all social identities together. Hold up, hold up. Would you put blackface mm -hmm. and a man dressing like a woman in the same category? So I would put them in the same category, yes. Okay. You sure you a you sure you a liberal man? I I'm I'm a hundred percent liberal. Yeah, I'm probably more liberal than most of the liberal people I know. I was yeah, man. Independent. I, he has. So, some ways. Here's the thing: is that to be liberal, right? So, I, and I look back to a bunch of these people, like Lenny Bruce, and uh, uh, you know, various comedians who would go up on stage and they would talk about uh, sex and they talk about drugs and all sorts of things. And people at the time were incredibly offended by it, right? And they threw him in jail uh, because of it. Stuff that. Today, like if you watch Lenny Bruce's stuff today, you'd be like, man, this guy is really light. Light, like mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's nothing about what he's saying that you would probably be like, he needs to be thrown in jail for this. That's the line. Right. I think people, if they do blackface, if I think if people do any kind of speech, if people do the requirements to be a parade and they're Nazis, that they should be allowed in this country to be able to do those things legally. So someone should be allowed to do blackface class. legally? Yeah. I, I don't think that that'll get them great measures socially. I think there'll be definitely consequences to their actions. So why right? is it? So yeah. why why would it be? Con Wait. So now you kind of contradicting yourself a little bit here. No. So why? I'm not. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> why would it be? Why would it be consequences for that? But it's not consequences for men dressing like women. They're actually praising it. Sh sure. So. Society responds to different things at different times. And I don't think those two things are the exact same. I think they're in the category of free you expression. You just said they were. No, I think they're in the same category as free expression. So if you, you are right. In the you, same you have category, the right. They will have to have similarities. You have the right, right to express yourself however you want. And all okay. social identities, right? So all identity politics, whether that's race, gender, religion, political affiliation, uh, the country in which you, you live in, the nationality in which you claim, all of those things are essentially human constructs from society. social constructs. I, I, we can right? agree with that. Yeah, we, well, just think, yeah, we agree with that. So all of those things have some legal protections. If you are a Christian, <laughs> you can uh, be protected from uh, not working on <laughs> no. Sunday. Right? Okay, I'm listening. Right. If you are, um, 
uh, going through uh, society and someone claims that you uh, don't know what Christianity is all about, but you claim yourself as Christian and they mm-hmm. require like you to go to church, they could be offended by you not going to church, but they can't throw you in jail for that. But are you a Christian if you don't go to church? That's I don't know. The thing, though. Uh, Jordan claims to be a Christian. I don't, he doesn't go to church. I, I do pray every night, but I don't go to church. Yeah. I'm looking to go back to church, let me tell yeah. you. And <laughs> okay, okay, you got, okay, okay. Historically, Protestants were the ones who actually read the section of the Bible in the Old Testament that said you don't pray aloud or in public. You actually do it independently upon yourself. That was a you're commandment right, from right God. That one. Right? I'm not one of the Ten Commandments, but it came from, right? So, like, those sorts of things. Like, you have divides even in the in the religion, where in Christianity, there are some people who say you have to go to church to be religious, and other people say, no, it's your personal relationship with God. With God, that matters, right. Right? So... If you have a personal relationship with God and that's all that's necessary in order to call yourself a Christian, I can't grade that in any way, shape or form. I can't tell you you're wrong. I can't tell you you're delusional. I can think, hey, you're talking to an invisible person who doesn't exist, right? That it's a make-believe, but that doesn't matter. I understand and that. I understand you are that, but still you do legally know, protected for doing that. I understand that, but you do know that you have to do things like how they were written though, right? You can't just Okay, I get what you're what do you saying. Mean? You can't tell nobody. There, there's all kinds do. of things in the Bible nobody does. Okay, wait. So if I'm a doc, okay, okay, we're just, we're just gonna go to a doctor. If I'm a doctor, right, and if I have to do surgery on someone's heart, right, can I just like <laughs> I'm gonna use your analogy here? Sure. So you said, you know, you can just, you know, kind of not do whatever you want, but you can like make your own interpretation of things. And basically, no one can judge you on it, right? So if I make my I'm not own saying no judgment, one can judge you on it. I'm saying you can't go to jail because you claim to be something that other people think you aren't. Hold up. So if I'm a doctor, if I'm impersonating a doctor, should I uh-huh. not go to jail? So impersonating a doctor is actually causing harm. Okay. If you but perform a what, surgery. Okay, but if okay. I just say I'm a doctor, if I'm like, I'm Dr. Danny, and I like put up a YouTube ad, Dr. Danny, right? Um, there's lots of instances in which I can actually use that title, whether I was an MD or not. Harmful in what way, MD. though? Huh? Harmful in what way? And we're going to get to our uh, last so if, final if question. I'm a, in, in your example, if I'm a heart surgeon, right? Or if I'm, a, I'm pretending to be a heart surgeon, I walk into a hospital and I tell people I'm a heart surgeon. And they're like, cool, doctor, come here this way and perform the no, heart no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, not, saying, I'm not saying That's you actually have to do surgery, right? We're just so there's also up here. opportunity harm, right? So say, I, right. say people on an airplane are like, hey, uh, we need a doctor. Is anyone a doctor? And you're like, I'm a doctor, right? And you walk <laughs> right. over there and you perform an action. It's not the fact that you claimed you were a doctor that's the problem. It's the fact that you attempted to perform things that we recognize require specialty skills and you pretended to have those. You you created a fraudulent uh, attempt to say, I'm this thing. You know, if if one of if if I or Jordan were to go and play Blade, right? And I were to tell people like, I'm actually Wesley Snipes. That's a different story than I'm attempting to dress up as my favorite character in a comic book. Okay. I'll give you that one. Especially if I try and get his credit card or try and use his car or license or anything like that, where I'm impersonating an individual on a legal ground. That's very different. Right. Right. Just like the person who goes into a bathroom and claims, oh, I'm trans, but has never had a history of trans and uses it just to commit violence against people. There's already crimes against that. That happens. Right? Yeah, it happens, happens all the time. Happened, but incredibly rarely, but it has mm, happened. Those people are I still wouldn't criminals. say that. Yeah, but okay. I can, yeah, there's a lot. Those people are still criminals and still re- are required to go to jail. But the person who actually is going through the process, who's actually um, you know, trying to participate in society as a woman who started off as a man, that's a very different story. Now, I do agree that sports that exist beyond puberty need some kind of alternative divide and not necessarily trans men and women. Why can't trans, why can't just, why can't trans people just have their own category? That's what I said. That's what I've been saying. Create their own leagues. Sure. People would so, watch that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people would. Right. But part of, I, you know, part of their argument is that they want to be part of like, you know, the identity in which they're in. Which they want to feel they, like a girl, right? And yeah. be surrounded by there are, girls. There are rules, right? There are rules and regulations that say, hey, we actually want competition that's fair. And we actually want... But their want testosterone color. isn't on the same level as a right. woman's, though. So yeah. Can we all agree that, like, at six years old, if, if everyone wanted to play baseball together, that'd be fine. It wouldn't really matter if the boy was claiming to be a girl or a girl was claiming to be a boy, right? They're at six years old. They haven't started puberty yet. There's no difference between them, really, in that regard. 
We can well, probably that say age, that's okay. At that right? age, yeah. Yeah, it's just kids playing baseball, right? We start to get into a gray zone when it becomes high school because we have lockers in a lot of places. That's that's potentially an issue. And uh, there's more things like puberty affecting uh, rules. And there's also that opportunity loss for going to college. It can actually commit, it can actually cause harm to the group that's traditionally supposed to be protected. So then Jordan, let me, Jordan, let me. We know the answer, but we have, a, uh, we, have a, we have to figure it out, right? I understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like it's just buttering people up and it's just keeping people delusional. But Jordan, let me ask you this. Do you think that it's the same for a woman to dress, I'm sorry, well, for a man to dress up, to dress up as a woman, excuse me, and, you know, a white guy put putting on black pages to, you know, impersonate a black. Do you think that's the same? Do you think it should be like the same? Do you think it should be shamed like the same? Uh, I, I don't think it's the same. I think there's a difference between painting a face and then let's say forcing your beliefs on people or let's say going into the bathroom as a man saying you're a woman and maybe filling a woman and her daughter, which happened in Planet Fitness very recently. I have that story saved and they actually... Uh, kicked or kicked them out of the gym for reporting it. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it's the same at all. I think forcing your uh, beliefs on someone is completely different than let's say painting your face black. And it's really that simple. Right. Yeah. I don't have right. much to say. I just, I just think that there, ev there's a new movement. It seems almost every four months, the past few years. As yeah. We can see. First it was and black it, lives matter. Then it was Ukraine. Then yep. it was, then it's Palestine. I'm, I see what you're saying. There. Yeah, and they, they they do this because they want us divided. They don't want us to unite and talk about the issues, which is why I'm very glad we're doing that today. We need to <laughs> do this. And uh, yeah, they, I just think both, and as I said, both sides suck. They're, I'd say the left definitely does suck more the leaders-wise, just the leader-wise. And mm. uh, yeah, I think the population is waking up and we're having these conversations that haven't been happening for years. And I think it's time that we have these conversations and we may That's disagree. True. But you know what? From what I see, we also agree on a lot of stuff at the same we time. So do. it's good that we're talking. This guy's this guy's a conservative undercover, man. I'm trying to tell you. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm but, a okay. I who walks around wearing cat shirts. And, uh, <laughs> hey, I love cats, too. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. But it's not, it's not the typical thing, man. And when I was in, uh, so, and here, here, to be fair, right? Like, um, I got my genuine start talking to people about, uh, politics because I went out of my way to say, Hey, we have an alternative to like firing people to cutting them out of their livelihood by actually like hosting conversations. Yeah. Right? Now I, a lot of, I you know, and that, and that, yeah. I don't think there's anything legally required for that, right? Because people right. sign contracts and those contracts can have all sorts of things. And we, we in this country very much don't like to regulate private companies uh, who are corporations because we think of them as better people than people. But um, <laughs> we do, uh, you know, all kind of agree that conversation, talking is the path forward. And there's it's people who key, don't agree. For sure, yeah. Right? The people who don't agree. And there are people, plenty of people on both sides who yep. do not want to have a conversation. Yep. Yeah, they're kind of that. stuck in their own ways, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and those people, like, I can't talk for them, but it's like, okay, well, whatever. Like, I, I'm never going to reach them. Whether it's a person who's yelling and screaming and saying they're as much of a victim as whatever. You should speak for all, all liberals. Yes. All but that's liberals. not all liberals. <laughs> Straight up. And it's not, it's not all liberals, and it's a lot of conservatives. Mm -hmm. So there are people on both sides who are basically saying, I'm in a terrible situation. When there are people who are really in terrible situations in this country, and we're not yes. doing uh, uh, much to really help them because we're politicking all the time. I mean, that's the answer to why right. things like the Violence Against Women Act was stu stuck in with the crime bill, right? That's why things like the Ukraine in the in Ukraine money and Israeli uh, Israel uh, money it gets stuck in with the border bill. With the border because they bill, they all are right. doing negotiations, strategies against one another to say, "Oh, you're against the border." Uh, so uh, you don't like border protections and really it's like, well, maybe I don't like the Ukraine and the Israel part. Yeah. Right. Right. But the, the, the Republicans do the same thing on the opposite side. Oh, I agree. I agree. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Okay, guys. Yeah, so last definitely. question, last question. And this is the big one. Okay. It's the big mm -hmm. question. Sure. So we kind of, so we, we've seen Trump's four years. 
And we kind of seen Biden three and a half. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you just want to say, I'm going to just say four. Three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> you know, he got to say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we kind of seen both of these guys as a, as president. So we, we got to be honest here, guys. Who do you, like, who do you think was the better president here, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? And we're gonna go start with we're gonna start with politics and life first. I think that's like the easiest answer in the world, Trump. Uh, you see, we the, this is like the first time we've had four years of each administration, so we actually get to look at the records instead of just saying, exactly, "Hey, yeah. this is what's gonna happen." Like they're still doing. I saw in the View today they're still saying that Trump's gonna be the king and never step down if he gets another. I've seen four that years. too. That was it's ridiculous. I've seen that. But they've been saying that Whoa. for how long now? They all big media has been saying that. But anyways, we have four years of each. We have had no record crisis under Trump. Sure, there were yeah. issues. There were issues with Trump, but he at least tried to fix it. It seems like Biden's almost lying or thinking that if he lies to us, we're stupid and just going to believe it. So it comes to the border. Now we have inflation. Biden recently said, what was it, like higher when he got into office? But even mm. CNN fact-checked him and said it was 1.9% when Trump left office. So – Huge inflation differences as well. So we got the border inflation. Now we have crime. Let me tell you, I'm in California, liberal state. It is terrible out here unless you're in Rockland or Roseville. I live in it's Sacramento. Terrible in Chicago it is well. a dumpster liberal fire state. here. And I'm talking within a mile radius there from my place. There's four stores closing in the last month because of mass looting. Or not looting. Yeah, looting. Yeah, looting. Mass stealing, theft, and uh, people, uh, security guards getting attacked in the store. People do not feel mm -hmm. safe right now. And the more people I talk to about this say the same thing. I mean, there's homeless camps like right down the street from my place. You never saw that when Trump was in. I'm sure there was homeless camps, but not like we see on this uh, yeah, it's terrible. type it's terrible, today. Man. Yeah. So and then everything's expensive. I don't need to remind you guys that uh, I just went to McDonald's today and got to make double and a little Sprite icy for over ten dollars it used to be four dollars like six months back what now it's two oh, it's over double yeah so just everything's expensive we don't feel safe inflation's man, killing that us that better uh, come with a that better man that better come with some a little extra bro god yeah leave. just i and all on top of that i am the biggest supporter of our cops and our military but i don't see our cops really doing nothing to fix the problem because they'll kick these like camps of illegals that are like a mile from my house and then the next day they just relocate to literally across the street so it doesn't seem like anything is being solved and as i said both sides suck but we're talking about the presidents right now so i wouldn't say trump sucks i would say the house sucks and the senate sucks for both sides but yeah i'd say crimes worse since biden's gotten in the border's gotten worse since gotten in inflation uh Everything has gotten worse. I don't see anything getting better in my life the past four years compared to Trump, or for example, even tax breaks under Trump. I never got as much as I got back under Trump. This year alone, I owed for the first time in my life. So it what? just seems like everything's kind of flip-flopped in the past four years, and not just a little bit, but on a big, yeah, just a big level. So, yeah, mm. that's what I got to say about that. I think Trump is easily the better person. We see how Biden debates. We see that he can't do scripted interviews, it seems, for more than 20 minutes without bumbling or lying and getting fact-checked constantly. Example, CNN interview the other day where he just lied and blabbed for, what, 30 minutes straight? He cannot I do a debate, that. and that's why I would love to see a debate between Trump and Biden because the last They're about one, to actually what? debate. They're debating I know. June. They're debating I saw that June. with CNN. Yeah, but imagine when they start bringing up the Hunter Biden laptop again, Bad. which remember was a lie last time, according to them. Mm. So, yeah, that's really what I got to say about that. So Okay, Caffeine Zombies, man. We, we kind of seen both sides here. We've kind of seen Trump. We've seen Joe Biden. We've seen the policies. We've seen the we've seen in kind of all, you know, but, you know, Biden kind of has. I say half a year left. So, and I don't really think there's going to be much of a sure. big difference. Wouldn't, so, wouldn't it really matter much? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay. So, so, um, knowing these things, right? Who mm -hmm. do you think was a better president? Well, who do you think have the better presidency, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Right. So, the first thing I value, right, is personal freedom. 
That's the first thing. It's on the top of my list. Personal freedom, national security, economy. Those are the three things I put in order. Right. Okay. That, that and makes only sense. Only one of the two presidents tried to create a fraudulent slate of electors, push them through an illegitimate process, and basically get them to override millions of people's votes. Only one of those two people did die. Joe uh, Biden? That was Trump. Oh, so that was Trump. wow. Okay. Yeah. So Trump's actually on record. Like he's on phone calls trying to get votes. He's the indictments. Uh, if you've read the 45 page Trump indictment uh, that he's seeking presidential immunity for, uh, not because he didn't do them, but because he shouldn't be held criminally liable for anything, right? Those things are a person who's not only going against the checks and balances of the United States Constitution, but he's also going against the rights of voters. Those what about the people that were dumping votes in the in the voting ballots for Biden? In the yeah, so if you look at almost any of those uh, cases, they've all been debunked. Uh, because, and that's in the courts by Republican judges. They won't even know. They so, so have there's, all, so, they have so there's a there's a video. Actual, for instance, look, the that, actual person who actually did that, who actually recorded that video, is suing them. Yeah, there's new news coming out. She actually said so that, can, that that wasn't fake. Right. Sure. So the person who said that things aren't fake, but then gets proven that it is fake, right? Or that it's not uh, exactly it what they're came from her. Great example is the Georgia no, state. No, uh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Event, Hold on. Right? You don't, you know, there... she's suing them, right? She's yeah. suing them. Yeah. She's suing them for them saying that that was fake. And she never said that. Oh, so, so the idea is this, you have uh, evidence that gets actually looked into. So Georgia secretary. Which is video State's, proof. Video proof. So you have that 90 second clip of like a person pulling out um, uh, ballots and people running away from the election office and then coming back. Right. That Trump was actually told was not the full 16 hours of video that existed. And he's like, no, no, I've got a better video. Right. Uh, he claimed that there were 205,000 dead people uh, voting or uh, 205,000 people voting by mail in Pennsylvania when only 182,000 ballots went out, which was incorrect and proven incorrect. Uh, you have him telling people that tons of people voted who were dead in Georgia, and they followed up on all of that. They are actually investigating these things, and they found two. They found two many people socials. Were actually hold on, hold on. Our right actual quick. process was figuring out. I actually out can that debunk that. Were I actually sure. can debunk that because they actually have found many social security numbers of mm -hmm. people who weren't alive on those ballots, bro. They're so looking at this is another great point, right? So if you actually look into that particular data, what you know is that the vast majority of those people were actually alive when they cast their ballots. No, they were not. Yes, they these were. People, these people died in like 1960, bro. Like the yeah, 70s people have been dead since the I 70s. Mean, are you or the retirement about, homes, like, homes too? The retirement these people homes have been dead since forever. Yeah. So if you're talking about actual people whose votes were counted. Yes. People this whose is during votes were counted were alive when they voted in the vast majority of cases. The, this is the, in 2020. The of voter These people, fraud haven't, is so people small. haven't been alive since the 80s, since the 70s, bro. So, so the, the amount of voters who like fraudulently vote, right? Like the amount of voter, voter fraud that actually exists in the United States for a very long it's time heavy. It's is very incredibly bad. small. Incredibly Whoa, small. I wouldn't say that. Stop, stop, but stop. But there's no evidence to indicate that it's you. anything other than How many? I have small. to fact check you. I actually I got a video saved. Uh, you do could... know 27. You do know 27 states. Out do not require a photo ID to in order to vote. Don't require a yes. photo ID but to almost vote. Almost every state doesn't require a photo ID to vote if you are religious and you have a religious exemption. That's actually Tons not true. Do. I that wouldn't know about that. Would be and, stupid. Yes, it is. Even in Pennsylvania, where they were it doesn't matter you what your religious ID. beliefs are. Yes, they you can have a religious exemption. They... Look it up in your state. Some states allow it, most states do. Uh, the vast but majority of states, because Some states if your state has Amish people in it, the Amish have a religious uh, uh, antithesis to photographs. So they don't want to have Are they legal citizens? You say Amish, and they are, are they legal, legal citizens, American and citizens? And they are allowed to carry IDs, including driver's licenses, without a photo on them because it breaks their religion. We make that exception for them because we value that. We know it doesn't cause any problems. Well, I never knew that, and I think that's yeah. pretty stupid. Many other states that don't require a uh, photo ID still require multiple pieces of identification and oftentimes a photo ID for your initial registration process. So they follow up with things like utility bills and other things that could only be sent to you by the government that come in your name that are legally backed and they uh, are counted as actual legal ID because you use those things to get your ID in most states. Right. 
But we're right? also we're also. Oh, can, I'll, I'll talk after. What were we gonna say? Go ahead. Yeah. I was just gonna say, but we're talking about how he said the election was rigged, which I believe it was. But it if definitely you guys, was rigged. If you guys remember, in 2016, the Democrats did exactly what they accused Trump of every single Florida. day, the whole four years. I mean, Hillary's still complaining about it till this day. Stay, Stacey Abrams. I mean. There, the whole entire cast of the Democrat Party pretty much said Trump didn't win because Putin helped him or all these other places helped him. It's sure. just it's just hypocrisy is all I see, really. And uh, well, I'm not going to back you? Hillary Clinton in any regard. Um, like, I mean, I don't think of her as a great person. I mean, I don't know her personally, um, <clears throat> but I will give her this. She's still conceded. Mm. Okay, I have almost though, immediately. Trump. Okay, almost my thing is the the Democrats always have the media though. They that have is true. The they always have the media. They There's have... plenty. The number one news organization is which one? It's Fox, Fox News. I'll give Correct. you that. But they're anti-Trump though. I would say they're, they're anti-Trump anti today. Why are they anti-Trump? But it's I don't know. <laughs> it's everybody they lost watching lawsuits Fox. where Hold billions stop, of dollars stop. have to be paid. Oh, I didn't know you were going to go there. Uh, Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Is everybody watching Fox News? No. Hundreds, millions of people, though. I will honestly, honestly, I would say people are actually leaving the yep. TV networks and they're oh, actually going to platforms yeah, like YouTube. People are going to YouTube, yeah, they're going like to all sorts of places. And right? Rumble and stuff like that, yeah, right? Exactly. So I would actually argue that that's actually not a good case to make because. But we're talking still 2016, we're talking 2020. A lot of that stuff, like a lot of the push to social media um, happened in part because but of that. We election. have celebrities, though. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, some celebrities are with the right. But you Not have much. majority celebrities, actors, even things like the NBA that, that are sponsoring Black Lives Matter. What are the Black Lives Matter under George Soros? What is George yep. Soros? A Democrat. You feel what Palestine I mean? Palestine protest NFL. too. Yep. Hold up, Palestine. hold up. You got the NFL, right? Everybody sure. watches this stuff, by the way, bro. You think NBA, the NFL, NFL is pro-liberal? I'm sorry? Oh. You think the NFL is pro-liberal? Definitely. How many how many liberals do you think watch Are you football? serious? Just the BLM take Yo, right there. You do know them. they kicked Colin Kaepernick out. You do know. Hold on right quick, bro. Yeah, for kneeling. For kneeling, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, for kneeling. But he you do know after that. They still are doing it, though, every day after Thank that you. Point. Thank yeah. you. It's People like after they allowed it. And then because they actually won a lawsuit in their contracts, but Kaepernick was already out. But that's the thing, though. He started a ripple effect when it come when it came to the kneeling, the disrespecting the flag. Like he started that, bro. I, me personally, I don't think it's okay to disrespect the American flag, whether you're kneeling, whether you're turning away from it. Me personally, I don't think that's sure, okay. But it should be legal. It should be legal, but yeah. I mean, is it really legal? Is that not treason? No, it's not treason at all. Like burning the flag, damaging it, not that's not treason. Treason is actually going against the government. I think you should be arrested at least for burning the flag, I would say. So you don't agree with free speech and free expression? I don't agree with free speech. No, people died for burning the American flag now. You just have to, to be, be responsible for your actions. You got to be responsible for yeah. what you do. So, so here's the thing. Here's the, here's the difference, right? So I go out, maybe I burn a flag, right? I shouldn't be thrown in jail, but I could lose friends. I could lose my job over that. Mm -hmm. Right? But... I can't be thrown Whoa. in jail. See, but look, is that okay for you to lose your job for a belief? I don't think it's okay, That's not okay. But it's legal. That's not necessarily like true because nowadays you can't fire nobody for release like that. that's discrimination. Oh, people right? fire people all the time for stuff like that. For the, you, so wait a minute. For you, things you say, you at can work. fire someone. You can say for, you can fire all sorts of people for the things you say. But at work. you gotta you gotta think about it. What side are they on though? Are they on the left or the right? Because you got, I mean, you got people that, that are on the right. Time, you got conservative really people that are getting fired by crazy leftoids. You know what I'm saying? So if you're and fired that's without normally cause, the case. you have the the ability to go against that, which aren't great, right? Because I also right. don't think our unemployment system is very good. But, but again, if you're I'm in a liberal, liberal city, city, if you're in true. a liberal state, if you're in a liberal city or a liberal uh -huh. state, nine times out of ten, they're, they're going to drain you with the liberal. Yep. I don't think that's true. I don't think you'll find uh, employers following. Do you that not see what's going on in New York right now with Donald Trump? What, what do you, you not see what's the, going on in Atlanta business? with Donald Trump? These are Democrats, the documents? bro. They're trying. Look, man. Me personally, the Democrats don't play fair, bro. Like, so here, here's here's the truth of everything, right? Which is that politicians don't play fair. 
No, yeah, I, yeah, I need that one. I'll give you that one. But it okay. has to be a line drawn when it Correct. comes to these. And two. I think yeah. that line at least needs to have where you're not creating fake electors to push through the system in order to overwrite millions of people's votes. But that also that would it, that, that also that. would include another presidential elector doing business with the Chinese Communist Party, and they're not even a president yet. Sure. You feel what so I'm we saying? can agree. So look here, we can agree that. Foreign investment and getting enriched off of foreign countries, I agree. No president should be allowed to do that. I also agree that insider trading should be illegal. But so first, why, uh, is, it, why is it a double is standard? Why is it a double I don't standard think there's a double Trump standard. Joe Biden? If you could prove that Joe Biden had direct interactions with the CCP and enriched we himself did. personally. He signed off on it. His not. son. His son. Biden. Biden. Come on. No. Even his business partners have come forward and testified come too. Come on, bro. But they haven't been able to provide <laughs> evidence. If don't I they were have to like... say, if I were Hold to on, say, let him look, speak. Let him speak. If I were to say, you know, hey, Jordan, you, um, I, so if I went and robbed a bank, right? And I got $60,000 from the bank. And I said, hey, Jordan, I'm going to pay you back for the $3,000 that you loaned me. Here's $3,000. Are you suddenly now a, a victim of the crime? Are you now a participant in the crime? If you knew he robbed no. the bank, yes. <laughs> I'm just asking from the actual action. We would have to prove that Jordan knew that I was going to go rob a bank. Right, and that we conspired together to go and do that, wouldn't we? And you would find that through a we text need message, some kind of record of that. You would find that through a text message with or a document. If Jordan just said, "Hey, the cat guy," in mm -hmm. his text message, the police don't have enough evidence to convict me, do they? If they see you with cats on the in your on your in your background, the only see you with a cat shirt. shirt. If the they only see you with with, a, with cats all around you you are the cat guy what are Look, you talking about i get i get that you want to draw a you're the only listen you're the only connection evidence. between jordan and cat guy you're the only cat guy that jordan knows i'm not saying you're the only cat guy jordan knows but they're gonna they're gonna put these pieces together bro yeah. like people it, aren't stupid isn't there text messages where biden actually or that there biden are actually, many text yeah. messages he between said, him and jim between yep. him and Hunter, between him, him and, and Jim, Sarah, him and Hunter, not him, him even and Jim. saying his dad standing by waiting for the money too. That's him again Jim as Hunter. well. Him and Jim as well. So, so keep in mind that I mean, literally, like James Comer, if he had the evidence, he'd be impeaching uh, Biden, right? No, he, I don't believe that. He's weak. He I, I does. He oh my God. He there, does, there's so bro. much He's evidence, but, himself. but there, but there isn't. So I, I would very much like. So most of this is built on this idea that Joe Biden extorted Ukraine in order to uh, get rid of uh, Viktor Shokin. But Viktor Shokin was actually already known by the European groups to be a terrible general pr uh, pr um, prosecutor. He actually you, kept you do people know, from being prosecuted. You do, okay. know Joe, you do know it's not just China and Ukraine that Joe Biden has been doing biz with, right? You do know he has actually done this with famous Russia as well. Like you guys want to always claim Here, like here's Trump the, is the here's the actual you know, guy. You here's do the actual know, double standard. With Biden, we have a text message that says the big guy. We have Hunter Biden saying maybe that my dad is standing by, right? We have these kinds of conjectures. And then we have the money trails that don't actually directly come from China, Russia, or Ukraine. We're on the because flip side. Because it's being laundered. It's line. being laundered, bro. Oh, my God. It's being laundered Trump... through Hunter Biden's Look, shitty ass paintings. You do know that, side, right? We have Trump appointing family members as officials who get enriched off of foreign investments. Trump himself getting enriched off of foreign investments. Trump himself. For a business that he paid back. He, you do what? know he paid that money back, right? So, what? <laughs> What do they sell? Like, what services do the Bidens sell? I'm just curious. So, again, Hunter Biden is a business consultant, which are a fake a believe, make believe job, right? Yeah. Uh, so, business consultants are terrible people um, because they don't really sell anything that's tangible, but they do sell a service that people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for easily on a normal day to day basis. Like Hunter, paintings. Right? Hunter Biden shouldn't be that All guy, though. United States. Like Whether paintings. or not Hunter Biden. Yeah. Whether or not Hunter Biden was like, hey, I'm a Biden, I can help you out or not. That's what isn't he does. What isn't, isn't what that's literally trying. what he does. That's literally it's what he uses. That's not what's on trial, 
He that's used not, his last that's name. That's not a crime for... for Joe Biden. If if you came, if you went out there and you were like, hey, I know this guy, Danny, and uh, I bet you that I could help you get into a business deal with him. And it's an illegal business deal. I'm not the criminal. Regardless of what you say and what you promise, the courts would have to prove, the, the prosecution would have to prove that you directly worked with me in order to make this happen, that we had to conspire together. You know together. who Byron Donalds is? So we would have to get these things together. Do you know who Byron Donalds is? is? I don't know who Byron Donalds is. Byron Donalds is a con is is a congressman out of Florida. I love he him. actually he went he went to the bro he went literally to the Senate bro and he had so many documentation I heard and papers yep. and screenshots and That's all types of things too. when it came to the Bidens bro he literally went to Congress and it's all on the record yep. now. He's that was his old job too. So he literally laid out like every <coughs> single bank transaction on what it meant, what Wait, it oh, shows, checks, and the corruption. The checks and stuff, right? Well, being just, being written to the Bidens. He, They're he being written to the Bidens. From Biden to Biden, right? I just find it crazy how everyone defends the Bidens, but when it comes to Trump, it's every case is just hearsay. Or like for instance, for instance, Ooh. Stormy Daniels. Who's already Thank come out you. and said that it didn't happen on multiple occasions? Sign up, David. Of course not the, well, that's not the charm. Trump. Hold but, on, let, let him speak. This is the last but, thing. Let him speak. Yeah. Go ahead. But it's also not a crime to pay off a porn star, and it's hearsay. There's literally no proof that it happened besides Michael Cohen looking like he's the one that did it in the end. Trump. It looks like Trump didn't even know about it. If anything, he's <laughs> the one that it looks like slept around with Stormy Daniels. But. Uh, it's, I just find it crazy how people will defend Biden to the grave when we have emails, texts, checks, uh, just everything. But with Trump, it's literally just hearsay on every single case. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that's how you are, Caffeine Zombies. I'm just saying that's what I see. Sure. Right. So go ahead, Caffeine. Case, go ahead. The New York case is the weakest of the cases against Donald Trump. In addition to that, it's not actually about sleeping with somebody or paying hush money. I right, gave you the strongest one they had, actually. It's it's the weakest of theirs. It's it's about documenting our uh, docu uh, docking up uh, business uh, documents, right? No, no, Take, I gave you the documents. strongest case that they the actually have. I, no, I gave it's you not the strongest, the strongest case. case. The strongest case they have is creating. No, no, not election. this one. Not this one. I, I oh. said I told you the strongest case earlier, which was the military documents that he had. No, that's we the, that's not that. even the, that's not even the strongest case that they have. The strongest so what case is they it? have. The strongest case they have is literally Trump conspiring with multiple people in order to prevent the rights of people to vote. But so, when, so what? Is the Trump Wasn't he just saying look into the, the election fourth, fraud? No. So this is the fourth conviction inside of the Trump indictment. Okay. So there's the first three, which are like obstruction of justice, obstruction of elections, et cetera. The last one is like breaking people's uh, civil rights to vote or equality to, to vote. Forget the exact language. And what this was, Yo, was that Donald I gotta get Trump a link worked to that. with his lawyers. Yeah, um, you can pull up the Trump indictment. Uh, you can actually watch my entire video where I walk through the entire 45-page document if you want. Yo. Um, so uh, you, the last one, which there's 120 paragraphs of evidence that they quote, right? All of this stuff is for the president. This is what the presidential immunity case is about. It was brought to Washington, D.C.'s district court and had to roll up to the Supreme Court because Donald Trump appealed it for the criminal uh, lack of liability, right? So mm -hmm. what the, the case is, is it lays out right after he was told that he was not winning uh, a whole series of processes where, you know, he tries to conspire with others to create a, a fake election information, misinformation, all that sort of stuff. But then even when all of that is failing, he actually works with his people in seven different states, six where they can actually have him counted as a conspirator and not just an unindicted co-conspirator. That's only one of them, right? Where okay. he actually worked with uh, the people on the ground to create electors, to stand in the place of the actual electors who represent the people who got voted. Follow the entire process of certification so that at the time of actually being counted, they would pass that list instead of the actual... Where is the evidence on this? I'm sorry. I, where so where is the is evidence the, on this? this is because the prosecutors I, are, here's the thing. The prosecutors are actually trying to get this court case through of course they that are. because they have <laughs> the evidence for it. So Come on, thing. man. So basically, yeah, there's no yeah. evidence? <laughs> yeah, no. there isn't. There it's is hearsay. Time. It's because he said, so, look into the no, election. Well, fraud, one, of them, one of the pieces of evidence is him calling the Georgia Secretary of State, which is actually on recording. You can listen to yeah, that. Yeah, I heard the whole thing. I right? heard that. He actually, what, 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 what law did he break? 
That listen, he actually you're he was actually helping to, Trump to with lie. that. He was actually telling you're, him to find eleven thousand seven hundred. It's not an opinion, though. The He's left think that this is going to you. This is to the left. I knew you. I knew somebody was going to bring up that recording. Really quickly, here's the thing about the evidence. They went to the Washington District Court of Appeals, and unlike 60 cases that Donald Trump brought to courts, this one was saying, yes, you could go forward with this because you have enough evidence on the face of it to be able to walk through the process. That's part of the court process. Okay. They can look at the evidence. They can go, this is enough to argue a case, and we can then see if people will convict him. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's at least enough to create a court system that's saying, yes, we should move forward. There's enough evidence Under to what do that. charges, though? Four of them. Um, they're all in the indictment. Uh, so I can actually pull those up if you want right now. I, real uh, quick, I just think this is just all hearsay as usual. It, yeah, this is not it, don't, it don't sound credible to me. But it, it's just like the last 10 years. They've always said, we got him this time. We have this. We have this. Release this. Release this. And it's always, just, it's 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 always the same. And I just I really don't see what's wrong with saying, hey, there was stuff that happened in the election. Look at it. Check it. Right. Then release the, the release did. it to the public. No, but there's new studies coming out on those audits that they they had like what was it in Georgia like or the, Michigan three hundred thousand missing copies of these ballots that they were supposed to show. And they didn't even have a copy of. They had no copies See? of these ballots. See? It was either I, I in Michigan and Georgia. I'll find the video later because I don't want to say the wrong state. Sure. But I'll find the video later and I'll send it to you guys. So the forty-five page document. Um, let me find it here. Oh. Washington Post. Don't want to use them. Yep, this can be your last. This can be your last counter argument. We're gonna close out. Sure. Um, so the here we go. Oh my lord! Just finding the actual name of the fourth. <laughs> oh my goodness! And I had this pulled up. <laughs> So, and do you know that the, so the Supreme Court, the reason why this is actually important is because the Supreme Court has seen not whether or not the evidence is accurate, not whether or not the evidence is good. They're actually arguing whether or not presidents should even be possibly held accountable for the alleged crimes. That's okay, what the I, presidential immunity case is about. That recording that you were referring to, yes, you Georgia do one. know that that actually helped Trump's case, right? That, that didn't help Trump's case. Let me explain to you because the okay. left want to think this is a this is a, a L on Trump's behalf. Because it's really not because if we want to, you, you're talking about his former lawyer, correct? No, this was Trump on the call. Yeah, no, I know, Ross but I'm saying the one he was talking to. No, this was the Georgia State Secretary of State. Yeah, this Brad means Ross that he was actually pretty... involving oh, okay, himself yeah, okay, yeah, in an okay, election process so you as do the know president he was candidate, not, which is you illegal. Do know he, but you do know he recorded him illegally, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're a public official. How does it matter if you're getting yo? So here's, hold on. here's the thing: if recording I record someone you committing a crime without their consent is illegal. If I record you when you're committing a crime, that is an exemption to the requirement to tell you that I'm and recording. What crime you. is that? But what he didn't threaten him. He didn't threaten him or do anything. You said yeah. we what know crime this is, is what what was that? He, he was, was really actually, just asking a he question. Told them Trump really that it sounded was more like he of a crime for them than for somebody else, right? He actually threatened them during the process, and he said, "Find me these eleven thousand votes." Now, that is actually a part of involving himself in an election process where he himself is the candidate and he is part of the executive branch. That the executive branch interfering with a legislative process mm. that is against the law. And that is not allowed in any case. Without your consent, Biden can't it? call up and be like, "Hey, Georgia, I just want you." They have a process for that, and that's called lawsuit. So it's being you recorded a without your consent. It illegal, doesn't matter if it's recorded yes no. against your consent. If I'm the FBI or I'm a normal person and I'm uh, walking up to a person recording them during a drug deal, guess what? That's an exemption to them being able to uh, say, "Oh, you recorded me without my knowledge and without my consent," because you can't tell them you're recording them committing a crime. That is a okay, legal what precedent. Crime, I'm still lost here. What crime? Interfering with was, elections. And under what circumstances, though? 
federal circumstances. He was interfering across the Where is the proof of this? Cases. That's what I'm saying. Where is the proof? You can't make a claim like that with no proof, but bro. They're giving him, like, felonies just by making a call, just saying, hey, I know this happened. No, I'm not saying, saying there has to be legit. There has to be on-paper yeah. proof that Donald Trump was trying Threatened. to... You feel me? So it's like, I understand what you're saying. The, the there charge is. can sound like... The charge can sound as bad as it need, as it needs or bad as it wants to sound, but at the end of the day, did he commit this act? Because so, but I don't but see But that's what the anything. court would decide. That's what the court should decide. The court, like, we don't decide that. Will it the be a jury? Whether... Will it be a jury? Well, hold on, hold on. It depends yeah. where he's at. Uh, exactly. I mean, it's going to be a jury. Nine times out of ten, being a, be a liberal state, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And I don't really think <clears throat> that liberals are fond of Donald Trump because, you know, let's just keep it a stack. Donald Trump is Donald Trump. So yeah. we have a couple of differences here in the sense that, like, you either agree with the, the jury of your peers process or you disagree with the judicial system as it as it lays out. Um, if you agree with, with it, he would have to be he would have to be brought into this unanimously. That's actually one of the concerns with the business case document right now, the hush money trial, right? Is that it's a jury of his peers, but it really has to be unanimous. I mean, twelve mm -hmm. out of twelve jurors actually have to agree that he actually was committed this yeah. crime. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to find twelve people where at least one of them would be a fan of Donald Trump. But I don't know about New York. New York. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter if you're in New York or somewhere else. A hundred percent of people aren't uh, uh, against New, uh, Donald Trump in New York. Weren't they just interviewing the jurors recently? Uh, and they oh, the were all half money. of them were. Oh, that was the hush money. Never mind. Liberals money as right. hell. They literally got f Donald Trump on their ex accounts. They have Trump with the uh, bars in jail. All type of stuff, bro. Like they have looked into these jurors, and this is why half of the jurors dropped out because the people found out who they were. That's well, not I mean, a fair they, election. They removed them, I'm not a election. Excuse me, not that's out. not a fair trial. So again, the, the the fact of the matter is, is that you would have to find 12 people who passed the jury selection process, who all of them would be biased against Donald Trump. If is that's that if possible, your argument though, is that New York, 12, that you can't find 12 people where one of them is not biased against Donald they're Trump, they're choosing a blue state. You do know there are purple states do, out there, do, right? Do you think that blue states are 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 only like on their one hundred percent liberal? You, there are purple states out there. Well, I mean, even liberal states, even blue states, like even California has conservatives in it, have Trump supporters in it. Clearly. Yo, what are the it. chances? Hold on, what are the chances, dude? Are you gonna find? <laughs> Come on, man. You, you Again, know what, Jordan? This is the judicial this process. Debate. Go ahead. I was just going to say I find this whole conversation being crazy and insane when it's already come out that the Obama administration and the Biden administration spied on Trump's campaign when he was an elected citizen or an elected president or that Hillary Clinton paid for the dossier for the feds and the CIA to spy on him for his whole campaign. Where is the frustration in that? That's actual treason on a voted president where he, Trump, just went and said, hey, I know this happened. Just look into it. And I understand it might have been rude how he came across it, but he, I don't see it as any crimes compared to, let's say, the Biden administration, Obama, who actually spied on him in his campaign. Right. Sure. And you don't so, see nothing about it. Like, they don't even talk about it. I mean, you it. do, um, but that's okay. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys read for news, but like, even when that was going on, uh, it was big news. I know. I'm just saying these days there's been no charges, but they're giving Trump all these like 91. You felonies, haven't seen Obama. Zero. Since. Yeah, zero. Sure. So, you don't see Obama at all anymore, bro. O Obama, when he was running, like, I, you know, I don't know exactly how they got through that process. But while Obama was in office, there's still Homeland Security, which I don't agree with. And Homeland Security is actually able to spy on individual people. So is the NSA. Mm -hmm. I don't terrible. think they should. I don't think that should be illegal. I agree with that. But whether or not it was a crime or interference of election process, that is, I mean, if they have evidence that it actually interfered with the election process, then they should bring that to court. I just think the people they are have. The, the judge won't take the case. 
That's the, the key. World, That's bro. the key to it all. The judges they are, want to take the cases. They are trying to. What the hell? No, no, no. So the, the 2020 election, I'm talking about the Obama stuff. So in the 2020 election, oh, okay, 60 okay. judges, 60 oh, district court oh. judges accepted Donald Trump's lawsuit on the merits. Then 33 of them, 30 of them, sorry, 30 of 33. 30 on what of basis, though? For the, so for the election being them, rigged? So they accepted the lawsuit. Uh, uh, well, I mean, his lawyers never even actually said that there was fraud. Um, that wasn't what they actually argued on Trump's behalf, even on Trump's behalf. Even Rudy Giuliani never argued that in court. What they argued was that the process was actually allowing in votes that shouldn't have been allowed. They didn't argue uh, that uh, the, the votes were actually fraudulent, uh, which they had plenty of opportunity to do all throughout the time because they were having court cases up until January. That's what I was going to ask you. Did you watch the court cases yeah, of the thousand I did. plus witnesses who said what they saw I watched during all this of the whole Wisconsin there you process? Go. Um, I watched There's all of the so Georgia process. And you, you, didn't, you didn't come that you didn't come to conclusion that there was a single problem with the elections. I mean, I saw hundreds of people testify during these court cases talking about stuff being like them being kicked out of buildings, like mm -hmm. walls being plastered and covered up so you couldn't see what was going on in these buildings. Sure, videos mm -hmm. of people i even saw a video on tiktok where someone's remaking it viral of this guy literally saying oh that's a trump ballot literally pulling out the ballot and ripping it in half and then wow. only taking the biden ballots which i can repost as well after this but i just feel like there's so much evidence when it comes to the 2020 election that it, yeah, I 2020 was, was very sketchy 2020, 2020 was very sketchy. um all of the metrics by all of the people all appointed by donald trump Hey, they're bad, too. They're bad, too. I, I think he had so, some terrible people voting, on his so, team. So here's That's here's where my mind gets really yeah. boggled, right? So first, um, this court case should be allowed to go forward because they have the evidence for the court case. Now, they would still then have a high bar to prove that Donald Trump was actually committing all of these uh, high treasonous crimes, right? That's one thing. Um, federal prosecutions, just so you know, they have, like, in the 90 percentile uh, conviction rates because they don't go to court without having evidence in advance. Well documented, Trump. well processed documents. This, not even with Jack Smith. Jack Smith is well known in the federal uh, prosecution department as he does the entire process all the way through. Um, the legitimate way so that there is actually no questions asked. So one, we should allow that to go through. We should not be wanting the U.S. Supreme Court to say that he has immunity because that would actually allow any president at any time to override any kind of voting election. That's the first thing. The second thing is that a lot of these evidences that are, are in existence, if somebody says, hey, I saw something, and they don't know what the process is, first of all, that's really bad information. Second of all, uh, it's just a person saying it. When they actually reviewed some of the videos that were being claimed as being bad, when they actually reviewed the full video instead of the excerpts that are going online, right, they were actually able to determine, no, this is normal processing. Like, mm. there's nothing wrong with this election process. So what yeah, about the, kind of coming so, Go ahead, I'm sorry. What yeah, about... Oh. They did it 30 times. On evidence alone, they said that Trump and his lawyers had no case, and the vast majority of those were federally elected or appointed uh, um, case uh, judges from Trump's administration. Trump trusted these people. They're in Why do people always say that? Hold on, look, let no, me stop right there. Why yeah, do he people... Wasn't let me, let me stop oh. you right there, because I sure. hate when people say this. Just because Trump anointed these people and just because Trump single-handedly picked these people, something like that, like, they're just supposed to do everything Trump say. Like, no, no, no. I that's don't think that's, that's how this works, argument. buddy. I, I, think so, that, I think you're miss, missing the argument. The reason why that's said and the reason why I say it is because it's defended against the idea that Biden had biased people go against him or that the administration had biased people go against did. him. What we're saying is that at the very least... Uh, these people were appointed by Trump, so they shouldn't have. They're the least likely people to have a bias but against Trump. But they have to do their job at the end of the day. See, look, that's the difference. Right. Between, look, Which is what wait they a minute. did. They wait did a minute. their job. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me, yep. let me put your brakes on for a second. So you're basically <laughs> saying, even though these Trump anointed these people, right, and that Trump had these people in these positions, they still did their job and you know what I'm saying? Did what they had to do against Donald Trump, right or wrong? These are conservative Republicans, correct? Yeah, which is exactly. So what wait a minute. Wait people. a minute. Now, when it comes to liberals and Joe Biden and holding him accountable, they're looking the other way. 
Now, do you I see the hold, difference with that? Zero done. I would 100% hold Joe Biden accountable. In fact, that's actually why I did my But victory. is he, though? But is he being held accountable the same way that the conservative Republicans are holding Donald Trump accountable with his actions? Hell no. Yeah, the big the big difference is that Biden... No, they are no not. Direct, you think the they big are? Difference is Biden has no direct evidence of any kind of conspiracy. He does! What about him being... What about him being a pedophile? What about him touching his own daughter? Or Ash, yeah, on, she just confirmed the diary. The, yeah. In her diary, like, come yeah. on. There's, there's audio. Yeah, there's that audio. Undisputed of her confirming it was evidence. Real. Sure. So, first, it wasn't, we don't know that it was pedophilia because we don't know any sexual act occurred. But oh, second, my God, bro. It second, is her dad. Second, Can you read what she said? Second, what the I would world? literally did you agree read, with you. Did you read the diary? Second, I would literally agree with you about that being a crime, but it is not a crime that is held against, uh, against a president in terms of creating election fraud. Why That's not? What? So, so wait a minute. He should be held so Donald accountable Trump for any, can, So they can, do a, they should, can do a case with Donald Trump sleeping with a porn star, but they the can't case. do a case with Joe Biden sexually molesting his daughter in the tub? So those aren't the cases. You're misdescribing the cases. If Joe Biden was up for a court it's case, sex. Her, what are you talking about? It's literally if, hush money. If Joe Biden was actually in a court case where the, the actual claim was that he was sexually assaulting his daughter, his daughter was able to come in and provide that same evidence. Right? She did. And it was she within didn't, the she didn't willingly do it, but she, she had should be held accountable. The diary. Again, he should be held accountable if that evidence is there and they actually are pressing charges. Like all of those things, if they're true. They Make won't go press forward. charges against Joe Biden. Yeah, That's won't. my point. I'm trying to let you know. They the know these things. So they know Joe Biden is doing these things, yet they continue look, to do nothing. They know the Clinton is doing this, yet they continue oh, to do yeah. nothing. His daughter can they still, know Obama's is doing this, yet they continue charges. to do nothing. What are you talking about? So we about? are now starting to see a one-party system here. His daughter could press charges. There's no one stopping her from pressing charges. Why would, would she do yeah, that in an yeah. election year? Yeah, they would take her out, I feel like. Literally. Again, here, here, here's the thing. If you rob from me and I don't call the cops and tell them that you did so, there is no state mandate to make you because pay me back or bring the subsidy. It is a crime family. I have this to is a charge Biden you crime with family. a crime. But, but you're basing the crime family stuff off of things that don't directly connect to Joe Biden. They're either why really would it good. connect to him? That's why it's a crime family, bro. They're, never they're either really to him. good at being a crime family and way better than that at Don, Yo, the Donald Trump. Why would it just automatically connect back to Joe up. Biden? It would have to directly connect to Joe Biden in order for Joe Biden to be held responsible. It it is, but at How the same time, not, why would anybody just come out and say that though? Because people do, and you can find documents. Like who? Like who? Look, look if you can't find documents, the only you can't people find that are speaking evidence, up against Joe Biden are Republicans. If you can't find direct evidence and you cannot make that stick in it court, is our country says you are not guilty. It doesn't mean you're innocent. So, writing in a diary guilty. isn't a written statement? You're now combining two different things. I'm talking about election fraud and him as president. Any kind of like state or federal crime, otherwise he's committed. It doesn't you matter. Can be held accountable for, okay, so wait, wait. I'm not, that there's prosecution of. I'm not trying to really steer off here, but do you think someone committing fraud is worse than someone that's committing pedophilia? Like, I think that a person who is trying to override illegally millions and millions of people's votes as the president of the United States is committing a heinous, treasonous crime. This is coming treason, from. This is coming from treason, the people that. This is coming from the people that, were, that don't sentence. require a photo ID to vote. They are those all of those states are democratic. So, so the reason why the voter ID is not required is because voter ID has never been required in a federal. It, no, election. I didn't say it wasn't required. I said it's, it's never not been required. required. In Twenty-seven out of fifty There's states. Been, it could have been in the Constitution of the United States. It could have been amended into the Constitution of the United States. It's not. States are allowed to run their elections however they see fit. But it also says in the Constitution that we should protect our country's border, and we are, have not been fulfilling yeah. that at all. And whose job is that? It's the Congress's job. 
Yo, but, oh my, I hate when people say this, bro. Oh my God, it Joe Biden though. literally has the power to do yeah, this, Yeah, he's bro. the leader. The Constitution, did it with exactly of the, United States. On, bro. the Constitution of the United States takes immigration out of the president's hands and put it in the Congress's hands. It's actually an explicit actually power of Congress. actually leaving it all to Greg Abbott. It is an explicit stack. power It's like Congress. Trump secured the border under executive power. So Trump didn't secure the border under executive power. He, he created take- some executive orders that would help to push people back, but really what helped is COVID. Help. Joe Biden eliminated that day one, bro. Yep. That's what That's I'm trying to let you know. Like Joe Biden took all that stuff away day one. He got so in office. When the UC, yep. uh, when the USCIS and the, the wall that they uh, were the building, border. gone. The, gone. The, yep. the bill when it came to so the illegal talking was about gone. a wall that he was paying like private companies to to go with, and they weren't getting good progress. <laughs> Obama built wall, but you don't praise him for that. Obama had lower inflation than Donald Trump, but you don't praise him for that. Obama had higher because stocks he's a Democrat. Trump. That's it, not that's exactly their, my that's point. Not their, is that the listen, things that you're using their... to praise Trump, you won't praise Obama for? Because the literal at the end of the day, they they oh you listen, froze listen, on that. <laughs> they praise no human is illegal. They praise no love. They yep. praise love is love. They praise. All of this, you know what I'm saying, goody two-shoe stuff, bro. How would I look and say, oh, Obama, and which is, this is actually true, by the way. Oh, Obama deported way more immigrants than Donald Trump, guys. Let's clap sure. it up. What do he, I look like Biden being a liberal saying a bunch of people. I'm surprised they didn't say he was racist for that. Like they did yeah, yes, Trump. Obama deported way more immigrants yeah, than Donald Trump. more drone strikes than almost any other president in the history of existence. I'm yeah. sorry. He also did more drone strikes than a bunch of other presidents in the past. Okay, now this is what I'm tech. We're going back to the double standard thing now. That's what I'm saying. Stick with me. This is the last comment. I, I cannot make. speak for anybody else, but I don't hold a double standard. I think the drone strikes are bad okay, regardless of which that. president you is doing that. it if they're killing innocents. I hold that the fact that we want to make sure everyone has the right to live here. I'm for the fact that we want to praise veterans over illegal people coming to right, the country. You're right. But I'll I'm also that. for children being saved regardless of a country they're in if they're running away from terror. So we need to have a vetting process, which we do. And people like uh, the conservative media misquote things like the 327,000 people who went to Florida. Remember, we had that conversation. When uh-huh. you look into that, they're not illegals. They're people who are actually vetted through a seven-step process by the border patrol. They don't get flown by the government. They have to get paid. To, they have to pay for their own flight to go there. They're still illegal, bro. They're not illegal because they're they being are. allowed by the United States they government. Are. Yeah, they but are, are the illegal. people voting on this, or are they supporting it, or people do they don't want vote this? on every every law? In know, fact, most people so- don't vote on any law. Yeah, which is why we need to get rid of those fuckers yeah. that do do that. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> so like, any, we, any last we live in a we live in Sorry. a constitutional uh, democracy, right? Where we actually elect people to create the laws. We Not don't actually vote the laws in; we vote the people in. So they we voted the, laws, the people right? in who created the laws that allow for these things to occur. But who signs off or veto those laws? Even if they're vetoed, a lot of these laws have like way more uh, support for them, right? Then but that's not vote. my question, though. Who if you actually veto makes them, the law a law? It just goes Who back to the, Yeah, so if you veto it, it just goes back into the Congress. But right? if, they can it re-elect, doesn't they can matter if it, it does, if it gets vetoed, they mean it's hand. not a law. Who signs off if, on the law, gets, yes or no? no. Who has if the it vetoed, vetoed, it, If it gets vetoed, it goes back into the Congress. And then it can still become no, law. No, it does not, bro. The executive branch literally has the power to make the law law. So here, here's the Constitution. The, the Congress, right? It goes to the House, it goes to the Senate. Um, both parties have to vote on it. It has to get through both of those houses of the legislation. Then it goes to the, the president to see if it gets vetoed or signed. If it gets vetoed, it comes back to the Congress. But it's not an official they, law. If they it gets can vetoed, okay, we, try, we have to try the, again. They can vote again and override the president. And then it doesn't matter if the president vetoes it or signs it. And now it's actually law. That's how you get a bill into a law. There's that 1970s cartoon, if you want to watch it. That's how the process works. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, how do I become a bill? How do I become a law, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And on the steps of Congress, right? So there's a a process for a president who's blocking things to get things still past them. There's also constitutional powers that dictate what each group can do so that they can hopefully have some crossover. Now, there is a big problem with executive orders, but that started with Ronald Reagan. 
He was the first person to start using executive order, just kind of like signing his pen away to try and make laws that that didn't really last very long, right? Because the next president would just come in and unsign them. And presidents kind of can't make laws, bro. See, that's what executive I'm orders are essentially laws once they're made, okay. right? But they own they can't go they can't override a, a congressional power and they can't override the constitution, so they can't remove constitutional capacity. Mm -hmm, right. That, okay. Right. Obviously. So there's a lot of things where the Supreme Court can then step in and say, no, you can't have that executive order. Um, but all the presidents literally since Reagan basically were trying to like double down and do more executive orders than the president before them. Mm -hmm. They they wield a pen in order to get their laws through, which isn't the process. It's not designed to be the process. It's not how we should be moving forward. Um, however, that's a common theme for everybody, even Donald Trump. Right. Right. So that's not a problem with uh, Republicans or Democrats or Trump or Biden. That's a problem with the system. With the power, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. We also have a Congress that's that's divorced. Like, they will not come to a term. They would never have this conversation. Oh, definitely not. They're so out 80% of them would be at home, not yeah. even voting. You'd have a couple right. of people who show up every single day, but you may not like them, right? Um, but they're actually workers. Uh, so, like, Bernie Sanders is a worker. You may not like him, but he shows up every single day. I feel like he used to be until he, I just he still, still that shows he, up. He sold out. He's okay. He's right? okay. You know, you guys when when, 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 when the old. record is like, you show up or you don't show up, like if that's the, that when that's the standard, he passes at least the show up mark, right? At least, yeah. <laughs> You guys better show up if you're taking taxes from us. That's how I feel. But they're not even representing <laughs> us at all. Okay, okay, guys. Like, okay, look. So I, I got last. Yeah. Okay, we got final remarks here, guys. We're going to start yeah. with politics and life. Final remarks. Oh, well, I'm actually new to this debate thing. So if you guys couldn't tell, I probably talked to least out of all three of us. But, um, you know, I appreciate the talk. I think it needs to happen more. As I said earlier, uh, obviously, I'm going to be voting for Trump. I think uh, Biden is a terrible person. But that's the good thing about debating. We can agree to disagree and still uh, get along and talk later, which I think is what we need right now in this country. I think we're living in historic times, and I think it's time for us to unite. For sure, man. Yeah. Uh, caffeine. Um, so I very much uh, appreciate the space, right? I, I said it in the beginning. I've said it a couple of times during the process where, you know, uh, personal freedoms are my top tier kind of a priority. My second is national security. And my third is the economy. So if you can't tell, like in all of the situations in which I talk about, I'm always like, hey, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, like those things have to be held up even when we don't like the other person or don't like what the other person is saying or doing, as long as it's not breaking the law or causing explicit harm. Right. right. Then it's national security that's worthwhile to pay money for. It's worthwhile to lose out on some other quality of life things or benefits. And then it's the economy. So the economy I consider the least important of those three, though still important because you got to pay for that stuff. Right. Right. Um, and I do yes. value the inventiveness and creativeness that can, capitalist societies create like ours. But we also have to have regulations that protect people and their personal freedoms. Right. That's the kind right. of uh, order that I have. So these kinds of conversations are fantastic because they do a couple of things. They get me your ideas and I, I can understand you a little bit more, right? And when we interact, then I go, you know what? Wait, if I'm just yelling about this kind of person or yelling about this group of people, then I know two guys and they're willing to talk to me. So clearly they're not all bad. And right. if they're not all bad, maybe the person in front of me is not all bad, Right. And I can actually have a conversation with them. And I may not agree. And you may not ever change your vote for Trump, right? That doesn't really matter. I really wish you'd vote for any other Republican, but it doesn't <laughs> matter, right? It's not my decision. It's your decision. And personal freedom's that top no line. Way. Right? <laughs> so you have the right for that. Um, but for me, like, I really wish we were in a situation where our two candidates weren't two guys who are older than 70 years old, way out of touch with the current <laughs> culture and popularity, like, piece of things that one of them I would give was, them that, that that people did not want a rematch between Trump and yeah. Biden. So I would yeah. and and one of them there's some conjecture for crimes uh and he may have not had the best like family scenario I, like he probably didn't you know tell Hunter not to do stuff. And in the other situation I think there's pretty good evidence that a person did commit like federal felonies and crimes. Um mm. those are our choices. That's debatable. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's the, that's the world in which we're living in where like we can't even get to a situation where this could be in a court trial. We can't even get to a situation where even if somebody was found guilty, either one of them, that they would be removed from being able to run for president. So you'll vote, uh, really so you, so you vote for um, RFK? Um, 
So I listened to, I, I was contemplating voting for RFK when I heard <laughs> one thing he said. And then I listened to the full speech that he had about the, And he went, like, he goes off the rails, man. When was this, if I may ask, the speech? Uh, he, was it recent? For RFK? Yeah. When he went off the rails? Yeah. No. Oh. Uh, it was he was actually talking about his campaign process and where it's at, and they were going over the data, and he's like introducing this person who's really uh, uh, he's like oh she's smarter and she's got a higher IQ than anybody in in politics and stuff and and mm-hmm. uh, they went over some data that they created, they actually went out and and did the uh, basically a bias survey um, that said that RFK would win in any matchup against Trump or Biden. I don't know about that. And RFK read, there was like one, this was, this was the telling point for me, because he read one line for one of the data pieces, and then it was just copy and pasted to another one a year later, and it was clearly <laughs> not like the same, and he just read it again, and it didn't even trigger in his head that like, these things are the same, and it didn't trigger in the person who created the presentation. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, not that really right. bizarre that you would have the exact same result an entire year later. That's Unless crazy. you reviewed the same data and just right. 2024 on it, you know. That's um, crazy. Just all all right, guys. Yeah, he, he he's he's a funny character, but almost all the third party candidates usually. He's, he's a funny bizarre. character. <laughs> <laughs> he's funny, all right. But all right, guys. Uh, we can I ask to... one question before we go? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. One question. Last question. If you couldn't have Trump and Biden mm-hmm. as the candidates, okay. Who would you go for and like uh, the, your pitch for them? Like, who would that be? Could it be anyone? Like, anyone. Could it be anybody? I don't even care if they're a politician or anyone who would run. It doesn't matter. Just anybody. A celebrity, a person you know, a friend. doesn't matter. That's actually a good question. So oh, yeah. I like Vivek Ramaswamy a lot. That's what I was like going to say. I like, I like Byron Donalds as well. I like Tim Scott. Um, Actually, if I'm being honest, Ron DeSantis actually was supposed to be next in line if he ain't if he mm. step out of bounds, he's questionable. But, I feel like right now he's okay, but you gotta look at Florida, man. He yeah, he that's, true. Florida that's true. Over. He look, he turned Florida around, and that's what I'm saying. I, I like results. See, and that's why I don't get why Kamala Harris was was vice president. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? Like Kamala that's Harris is terrible, <laughs> but it's like you know what I'm saying. Everybody got their own opinions and stuff like that. But me, me personally, I definitely think Vivek Ramaswamy would be my first option. And I would say Byron Donalds would be my second option. I would say for me, that's when you said that Vivek is definitely my second choice, just mm-hmm. because when it comes to America first, like the whole platform, it seems like him and Trump are almost identical. Um, yeah. And he's just one of the best talkers I've ever heard in my life when it yeah, comes Vivek to responses. Right. I would say Vivek and Matt Gates or Vivek and Byron Donalds. I was, I was gonna say the exact same thing before that came out of your mouth. So don't think I'm copying you because I'm not. Right, no, no, it's all good. good. (laughs) But but all right, man. That's uh. Well, matter of fact, let me ask you: Who would you choose if uh if you didn't have to choose Biden or Trump? Sure. Um, I would probably choose this guy who would never run, which is Scott Galloway. He's a Hmm. like a professor economics uh, economist. Um, he went on to various news media organizations that you probably don't like, but then he walked away from them because he didn't like them either. Um, like MSNBC, he has a really great podcast. Um, he actually released a TED talk recently, which is how America is destroying like the the youth, like the current. Pos- he he, does, he just doesn't care. He he does he does a lot of data. He does a lot of research, and he's very passionate about what he says. Um, mm. He's I don't think he's the best moral character, and I don't think he would survive the pressure. Um, but he's a really like honest person and he's willing to accept information that he may not like originally. Um, this is so, Galloway, correct? You said yeah, his name? Scott Galloway. Yeah. Scott Galloway. I'm going to have to look up. Yeah. Uh, he's written a couple of books, but like the Ted talks is if you just look up Ted talks, Scott Galloway, you'll watch a video of it. And I think you'll, I think you'd probably agree with some of the stuff he said. And he has mm-hmm. a great podcast where if you start listening to it, you know, he was one of the first uh, like liberally minded people to bring up this idea that we're like destroying men in America and the, the culture around men is really bad. Um, I, agree yeah, I, agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree. Um, and those video, those audios pretty much predate, predate like a lot of the people on the conservative or the left who were having those same conversations. And he wasn't very popular because of it. Right. Um, and th- those are the, he, he, that 
that level of honesty I just don't think exists in most anymore. politicians right now. Oh, they're, they're brain. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it exists, but not rarely. in politicians. Very rarely. I think it there's exists, more but not honest in politicians. People, and you probably you probably won't like this answer, but I think one of the most honest people, um, and and I'll agree with this. So like the mo- one of the most genuine people, so people who present themselves in their most genuine self, I think was Trump. I don't think he's very honest, but I think he was the most one of the more genuine politicians we've had. You didn't have to question that he was keeping like things in the back of his mind. He just okay, kind of felt, right, right. He right? told you what was yeah. He told you um, what he felt. But one of the most honest people, I think, in politics right now is actually AOC. Oh, I was hoping you would say that. I know. <laughs> Are you I know. serious? I think she's honest. I don't necessarily think she's the best person for like one of these jobs. Necessarily. Yo! She was one of the first people to call out like, hey, politicians need time to read these documents. <sighs> she was the person who read the documents. They never say AOC. But, but I, think she's, I think she believes everything she says. But what about I the don't war that think she votes most, to support? Right, I don't people. think most politicians so do believe, you believe that picture? That I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to say this because, uh, yeah. you know, I got to close out here. But do you yeah, think what she did at the border was real? Do you think those tears were real? <laughs> no. I, I do. I, I, I really don't <laughs> think she, I don't I don't think she has a dishonest bone in her body. Um, I think she'll get there because <laughs> she'll be in politics for a while. Um, I, I also said this about Marco Rubio when he first started. Marco Rubio started off as a pretty honest character. Uh, he was actually getting yelled at by a lot of the Republicans for things he stood on, like trying to make a pathway to citizenship uh, by getting in support uh, throughout his his state. Um, and then he shifted to just a your average, everyday corrupt politician. Um, yeah. Almost within a year or two. I think she's going to get there. Yeah. Man, look, she got a lot of work to do, man. But yeah. Yeah. anyways, guys, we're going to have to stop right there, guys, because we got yeah. almost two it's hours in. Yeah, two hours. And, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So, man, that's all the time we got for today, guys. Make sure you guys please check out Politics and Life. And mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong side. Make sure you guys check out <laughs> Politics and Life and make sure you guys check out Caffeine's. I'm like a robot. <laughs> but make sure you guys check out uh, Caffeine Zombies as well, guys, man. You're definitely going to learn a lot when it comes to these channels, guys. You got both sides there. So if you guys want to check them out, I really appreciate it, guys. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this fabulous, fabulous discussion, guys. Now, if you guys want to see this again, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button. Make sure you guys go into their channels as well and check it out. And... Any last things you guys want to say before we uh, get up out of here? I'm willing to talk. I'd say we should do this once or twice a month at least if you guys are up for it. Talk about the I issues. think you should bring one more person with you, Caffeine Zombies. <laughs> I, I, I don't know another person who would be willing. So here's the thing. I don't think I, I could find, um, I don't know off the top of my head, a liberal who would hold their uh, calm, right? Uh, who is also? Oh, so politics. you only know radicals? No, no, no. I, mm-hmm. I just I know passionate people, right? So one of the things is that for a lot of people on the left, uh, these are actual concerns that they feel like are actually removing rights from them, right? And and in some ways they're correct. So for instance, like you may not word. agree with abortion. But if you're a woman and you're a liberal and someone's saying, I'm going to ban abortion, and you've had that your entire life until now, you're having something taken away from you. Hmm. It's easier for me as not only a person who would never need to have an abortion, um, <laughs> but also a person who just stayed, I don't get offended. Um, like, I, I've never been offended in my entire life. I think there's bigger issues than, than what people say. Right, sure. I can definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can be in those situations, and and I I literally asked a bunch of my liberal friends like, hey, do you know any like conservatives that I could go and talk to because I want to learn from the other side. I don't want to be in a bubble. And you know, right. people would joke and they would say things like, uh, that you're never going to find a reasonable conservative. They died off long ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, now they're never going. You know, what? if they're hearing you say this, they're never going to uh, have that piece. That's not all of them, but that's the vocal minority. Just like. The vocal minority on the conservative side would say everyone is pushing everything on me and I don't have any rights and I'm always being canceled. We are having this conversation. We're not canceled. Right. right? We're not big gotcha. enough to be canceled. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Hopefully. So, we'll, 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 we ain't someday. there yet, but we'll get someday. there. Right? <laughs> well, that's all, that's all right, guys. That's all right, man. 
But um, yeah. man, I really appreciate you guys having this conversation with me, man. This was definitely long to come. So, man, if you guys ever want to do this again, you know what I'm saying, just hit me up on X and let me know. And make sure you guys tune in next time. And I will see you guys next time, man. And I am out. Peace.